Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. And today our topic is about women, which is a scary topic. Mm, let us hope that you will finish this safely. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, I have another request. And this time is from a Muslim, Muslim lady. Uh, she sent me some articles uh, those articles saying that uh, women are in Islam they are way more respected than any other you know I want to remind Muslims that the wife of Muhammad the first wife the elderly wife who he married her because she was rich she was a business owner before Islam after Islam women they became in Burqa before Islam there is Women in the Middle East, they used to be queens, rulers, and history report many names. After Islam, women, they became an object of sexual joy and kitchen stomach joy. Uh, today, we will show you some examples. We cannot cover the whole topic because this is a huge topic. But if you read my book, Sex and Allah, you will see how Islam look at the women. They are nothing but sex promise. But here we have uh, Dr. Zakir Naik, who is very, very, very educated Muslims about Islam, according to Muslims. Uh, he will tell you what is the legal rights of women in Islam. Let us see. Discuss the legal rights of the women in Islam. Legally, men and women are equal hmm. if for the crime they commit they get the same punishment okay for example for example see here you see that there is no decency with muslims who explain islam to us is it true that the punishment for women and men are equal let us go and see the quran let us say there is a man he is a homosexual and there is a woman, she is a homosexual too. Let us say lesbian, sorry. What is the punishment for the man? And what is the punishment for the women? According to the Quran. Remember he said, this is, you know, they have a, a equal punishment. So if we go in the Quran, we find this. And you will notice right away, this is why we cannot consider any Muslim from those who speak to us in YouTube or who claim to be cleric to be decent and honest to explain Islam to us. We cannot trust them. They are not trustworthy. This is the Quran. This is not Christian Prince saying. This is not Zakir Naik saying. This is the Quran. Chapter 4, verse number 15 and verse number 16. Chapter 4 verse 15 is speaking about women committing illegal sexual relationship. Those are lesbian. So those women who do such a thing or do any sexual thing, let us say, she is in, in not married now. She step with somebody, let us say. Not necessarily a woman, but most scholars agree that this is about women. But let us say a woman should commit any sexual relationship, including being lesbian. What is the penalty? The penalty, as you see in the Quran, that those women, they will be jailed in their houses until they die. This is the punishment of a woman committing a sexual, illegal sexual relationship, which is like being lesbian. What is the punishment of a Muslim man if he commit the same exact sexual act, if we can call it illegal? If two persons among you, men and women, they commit illegal sexual intercourse, punish them both. If you go and read the Quran, you know, by the way, this is fast translation here, it says, if two person, men and women, this is this is not true. It says and both those two men. If two men, if you change the translation, you will see this is why 
If you remember yesterday, we have a, I have a Muslim, uh, is an African Muslim. He asked me to read it from uh, uh, Rashad Khalifa translation. You remember? And we we noticed right away that in in the chapter we were reading from uh, seventy nine verse number thirty. Uh, uh, you know, there is the whole sentence is taken off from the Quran, and he changed the whole meaning. So, if we if we go and find different translator, we will find that the Quran totally changed. Let us go to Yusuf Ali. Let us see what he will say. If two men among you, do you see how things change? And the other translation says, if two, and then between two bracket, women and men. In fact, this is about homosexual. If two men among you, and the Arabic is so clear, it says, well, then so so. I mean, it's it's even a, a stupid kid who don't know Arabic yet, like in let's say in his sixth grade, he will know that this is about men. But look, we just change the translation, and we find different punishment if two men have sexual relationship together. So, if two men among you guilty of loudness, punish them both. But if they repent, leave them alone. Okay, if we go and read the interpretation for this punishment, you will see, beat them by sandals, insult them. If they repent, leave them alone. So how come the women, they will be jailed until they die for the same crime? Do you see how, why we say they cannot be considered to be decent people to explain to us their religion? He just said, women and men are equal. Is that a God talking? The Muslim, they will say to you, but this is abrogated. Are you saying your God, Allah, he found that he's stupid and he's changed his mind? <laughs> and have you ever heard of religion like this? So if two women, they do sexual relationship together, they are lesbian. We jail them until they die. That's it. There's no forgiveness. But if there is two men, they do the same crime, if we can correct a crime, you know, because this word is dependent in the society and the culture. In some culture, you know, this is not a crime. In other culture, it's a crime. In the religion of Islam, this is a crime. All right, no problem. But how come the God of Islam is not dealing justly between male and female? Two women sleep together, two men sleep together. Well, how come when the women they sleep together, they have to be jailed until they die? But if a man they sleep together, we beat them by sandals and we let them go after that. And actually, I think if you beat a homosexual with sandal, he might like it. Chapter 4, verse number 16, about men having sex together. We can go and read the interpretation for it, so most of them they will not say, oh, he is making up interpretation. Uh, this is not even about homosexual men. Let us go and see if this is true or not. And then when two of you commit that loud act, adultery, or homosexual intercourse, punish them both with insult and beating them with sandals. Do you see it? If they repent, let them go. So Christian Prince is not giving you his opinion. This is what the Muslim and the Mohammedan believe. And this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. And this is the Sira Jalalain. So if a man have sex with a, with a man, we beat them with sandals and we let them go. But if women have sex with the women, we jail them until they die. But we just heard Zakir Naik said, both they have equal legal right, especially when it's come to punishment. So he's lying. If we go to the different verse in the Quran, not only this one, we will find the following as an example. Chapter 
chapter 2 verse 178 if we go back to Zachariah hello everybody from Philippines from Brazil from Africa I'm so glad to have you God bless you all you're welcome and I apologize if I don't answer you you know as you see we are focusing on a topic so Zachary he says in the case as an example in the case of murder did he say in the case of murder let's go there no this is not Zachary hold on let us go back to Zaksuk legally men and women are equal if for the crime they commit they get the same punishment say the liar for example yeah example. if a man kills a woman the man is put to death Okay, hold on. Let us go to the Quran. If a man, he killed a woman, the man will be put to death. So what this book is about? I mean, what this guy is talking about? So why the Quran say something else? Oh, you believe the law of equality is prescribed to you in, to you in the case of murder. So now we are talking clearly about murder. About what? Murder. The free for the free. So if you kill a free man or a free person, a free person will be killed. If I kill your slave, you kill my slave. Slave for a slave. <laughs> and the women for the women. So if I kill you, I kill, if you kill my women, I kill your women. But this guy, he just said, in the case of murder, both of them, they have equal punishment. That's not true. In the case of murder, both of them the victims we will have two victims not one because now if you kill my women i kill your women so both women they are not part of the crime so neither me or you are killed zakonaik will say to you this verse is abrogated so here we go again the quran so are you saying to me that allah he fixed it are you saying to me that Allah, he made a law for the murder and he found that this is very stupid? Are you saying to me you are not proud about this verse of Allah and you are proud about a different verse? So you are quoting one verse you like and you ignore the other verse you don't like? Here you see that Islam is not even to be considered. Because there is no way, I mean even Joe Biden, he don't change his mind every few weeks about an order. I mean, what's wrong with this God in the case of murder? Murder is a murder from the time of Adam until now. Nothing will change. So the punishment should be a punishment and justice should be justice always. So when Muhammad, he practiced this verse, he was practicing justice or injustice. So do you see how they lie? When Zakarnak says that legal right for women do the women inherit the same thing as a Muslim man? The answer no. All right, look like now it's coming back. You see, because from my side, uh, do we have a connection or not? Let us see. Yeah, see from my side it says excellent connection and I have actually the scale here is showing me that my, uh, my internet is very strong. Still YouTube was, you know, maybe there's an issue in YouTube. So anyway, we go back here. 
And you will see that in the case of women, a man, he can beat his wife, but the wife, she can't beat her husband. Is that a legal issue? Absolutely. But Zakir Naik was just saying that when it's come to legal and punishment, they are equal. Uh, if, if this is true, well, if somebody do wrong, according to this verse, only women, we can beat them. And we have the right to stop sleeping with them. We have the right as men to uh, to school them. We have the right to beat them. If they obey us, we stop doing all of those things. But he just lied and he said, women, they have equal right. And here you notice, by the way, that this is where terrorism started. You know, terrorism is when you terrify your, your child, you just say you are a very aggressive father, and you terrify your wife, so you are very terrif you know, terrifying husband. Uh, you use violence in order to silence anyone who will oppose you. This is the purpose of terrorism. Somebody who don't agree with you, so we scare the hell of them, and then they have to agree, otherwise we will keep doing what we are doing, until they agree. That is the truth about Islam. So, if a woman, she commit adultery, we jail her until she die, as we saw in verse number 14, uh, 15 and 16. But if a man, he did, two men, they did the same act, we beat them with sandals, and if they repent, repent, we let them go. But if they are women, we jail them until they die. The Muslim, they will say to you later that Muhammad in the Hadith, he said, if a man, he commit this sin, kill him. Here you notice that Muhammad is a prophet for different God. Because if the Quran says, those who commit two, two men to commit like homosexuality, just harm them and beat them by sandals. And if they repent, let them go. And then you say to me that Muhammad, he changed that and he said, no, kill them. Here you notice that Islam is a very confusing, stupid cult. Because there is no way that a prophet, he will oppose his God. And there is no way there is a God, he opposes a prophet. And if Allah, he said to Muhammad, I changed on my mind about those verses. Well, he should give him verses against them. Same time. What kind of God he changed his mind about it? I mean, it's so clear that this is your decision. So did you did, did anything change? If two women 1400 years ago, they have sex together, or two women, they have sex together today, what is different? Nothing. You see, this is not about economy. This is not about mathematics. This is not about going to the space. This is not about going science. It's about two women sleeping together. So why the punishment for the women is not equal for the man. So when they say that in Islam, there is equality of punishment, that's a big fat lie. Now we have another person, he's asking the Sheikh a very important question. His wife, she is committing different crime, a high level of crime. Brother Yusuf is facing a dilemma okay. with his wife. Now, he says, may Allah Azza wa Jal grant his wife the hijab of Umm Sulaim. And I would say, Amin. And he says that his wife loves during Ramadan to watch movies, TV series, listens to, listens to music, etc. And he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do. Akhi, there is a big problem among or between the spouses, mm -hmm. the couple, mm -hmm. when one of them all of a sudden starts to be practicing. This problem would not have appeared most likely if before you got married, you selected a spouse or a wife mm. to be in the same or better than you in your religious practice. So if I were to get married, I will not choose a belly dancer. Can you believe what this guy is saying? What this woman she is doing, she is listening to music, 
and watching movies and he is saying to him I mean why you do that if you want to marry why you want to marry a woman she is a belly dancer <laughs> And I assure you that those who grow their beard, they don't only watch belly dancers, they watch porn non-stop. Actually, if you go in the Middle East, and any Muslim can confirm or he can deny, but we know, all of us. I remember once in the Middle East, I was in the roof of my, of, of my dad's house, and everybody working in a satellite dish. Everybody has a satellite dish. Everybody is changing direction for a satellite dish. I went downstairs. I mean, the, the dish is working fine. Everybody have a dish. So why everybody is changing the dish? Afternoon, you know, we went. I met some friends. I was a teenage. They told me, did you, did you, did you change the direction of this dish? I said, why? They said, because the porn channels, they are in different satellite now. <laughs> so everybody in the roof in the whole city, Muslims, Christians, you name it. But for sure, the majority are Muslims. Everybody in the roof is changing the direction of the satellite to watch porn. But everybody in the ground is very religious. They pray five times a day. Women, they wear burqa. But at home, the husband and the wife, they sit watching porn. So now this guy, he has a problem. The whole world have to know about it. His wife, she listened to music, brother. Which month in the month of Ramadan? Like supposedly in the month of Ramadan is different. I mean, do you see the stupidity? If music is forbidden, music is forbidden, doesn't matter if it's Ramadan or not. According to Islam, the sound of a bell is forbidden. Do you have a phone bell? Have you ever heard of a Muslim who don't have a song in his phone? Have you ever heard of a Muslim who don't have a TV? Have you ever heard of a TV don't have movies, particularly in Saudi Arabia? This guy, he lives in Saudi Arabia. How come you don't dare to open your mouth about the new beach is open for the bikini in Saudi Arabia right now? Do you dare? So those people are potatoes, you know, they, they present something is not even exist. If I go right now to YouTube, you know, when you hear those people speaking about my wife, she is listening to music. You will, you will think that this is a very conservative society. Extremely conservative. In reality, it is the most lousy society ever you can imagine. I will type only one word in YouTube. I just type in the search engine only one word. What do you see? If I play the video, you will get disgusted. Look, those two women dancing in the top of each other in a very sexual way. And they are wearing hijab. And they are wearing burqa. It's a very conservative society, brother. Extremely conservative. You cannot believe how conservative it is. Look, those YouTube, they blank them because they are too much. They are blank. You have to sign in to, to see them. Do you, do you see? Even YouTube, I mean, YouTube who allow nakedness, even YouTube is, a, is, is putting a blank image in the top of them. Did you, did you notice? Did you notice? Look at this. You have to sign in and click that you are 18 and over so you can see it. This is how bad it is.
But in their speeches, they say something. In reality, they are something else. So this wife, she is listening to music. Okay, brother, what we would do with her? Here you see that this guy is not being a man to say what Quran teach. Because maybe YouTube will shut him down. Is it the Quran says, if your wife disobey, you beat her? Actually, you know what? Let me search for the same shake, the shaky shake, to see what he say about beating wives. Maybe we can find a video about it, made by him. Let us see. We found a video by this guy about it. <laughs> Atib says, about the beating of a wife and he quoted a hadith in, in, in the verse of the Quran etc Akhi, the general trend is that Allah ordered men to be kind to their wives uh -huh. Allah says in the Quran you have to live with them okay. in what is normal what is kind what, what is, is well known to people to okay. be accepted. What is that? You have a mother, you have a wife, you have a daughter, you have a sister. Here you notice the, the hypocrisy. I mean, there's a verse in the Quran that says, beat them, and now you are saying to the that the Quran says, be nice to them? No, you're a liar. The Quran says, be fine with your wife if she obey you. She don't obey you, we beat her. This is the normal. The second she don't, or even you fear that she will not obey you, you beat the hell of her. And you don't like people to deal with them harshly or in a violent way. Uh -huh. So this is the general trend. This is the general, okay. However, However, what goes behind closed doors is something that only the man and his wife are capable of handling. Hmm. There should be no outside interference because whenever there is interference from the families, things go south. Mm. Also, the Prophet والسلام, told the companions that a lot of women visited my wives and complained to them of their husbands beating them. Mm. By Allah, they are not from among the best of you. Did you just hear what he said? The women who complain about their husband beating them, by Allah, they are not the best of you, they are the worst. Why? Because they complain that the husband is beating them. But you just said in the beginning, you should be uh, fine, kind to the women. And now you are saying that the woman she complained from beating her by her husband, for sure she is a bad woman. So, in Islam, even the right to complain after the man he beat the hell of you is taken away from you. Because now any woman, she will not complain. Because if she do that, the Prophet said that the woman who complained because her husband beat her, she is a bad woman. Another way he's saying she is a whore. She have no right even to complain. And for sure that means she have no right to call the police because the police will say to her, well, he's your husband, he have the right to beat you. If the neighbor is the one who beat you, we can arrest him. But as long as your husband, well, he have the right to beat the hell of you. So here we see how Islam legally, as Zakir Naik says, treat women equally to the point the women she can't even complain about her husband beating her. And complain to them of their husbands that a lot of women visited my wives and complained to them of their 
husbands beating them. By Allah, they are not from among the best of you. See? Meaning these men who beat their wives are not among the righteous. The, the, the Look at this idiot. The hadith is the opposite. He says by Allah that those women who complain are not the best of you. He make it about the men. <laughs> Do you see the coward? Unbelievable. Let us go to the hadith and laugh together. Hold on, let me find the hadith. You see, because in Arabic, the language is, uh, is very clear. Actually, the, the, this hadith he is quoting this potato. Uh, is the reason for the verse in the Quran to come and to beat women. So how he's saying that if the man he beat his wife, he is the bad? Let us see. Uh, let us go to this one. And let us see this hadith. It says here that the Messenger of Allah is saying, don't be uh, God's handmaids. But when Omar came to God Messenger, to Allah Messenger, he said, the women have become emblonded um, toward their husband. So he gave a license to beat them. Then many women went around God Messenger family complaining to their husband. And he said, many women have gone around Muhammad family complaining to, of their husbands. And then he said, those are not the best among you. He was speaking about the women because he is the one who gave license to beat the women. Because what this guy he just said is the opposite from what the license said. The license said, beat your wives. What happened now? Women are complaining. So if the men, they are practicing the license Muhammad gave them, <laughs> why they are the worst? <laughs> so you see here, he tried to change the meaning of the story when the story is so clear. It's about Muhammad giving a license to beat the women and those who they are complaining they are the bad. Let me show you here, just to show you how we can make it clear. Many women have gone around Muhammad family complaining to the, of their husband. Those who do so that is who take to beating their wife are not uh, they are not the best among you this is the translation of this uh, uh, report here look what the translation is saying those who do so do what complaining and then here continue he's saying those who take to beating their wives are not the best among you, but this is not in Arabic. In Arabic it says, Yashkuna azwajahun, laysa ula bi khayrakum. Those who complain about their husband, they are not the best of you.
Now here we need to ask the question, if the man, let us say for the sake of argument, if the man who beat his wife is not the best of you, so why Muhammad gave them the license to beat them then? <laughs> You see, this is why the translation and the fabrication is amazing how they try to cover the stupidity of this cult. You just gave them license to beat them. It's like, you know, uh, the government, they gave me a license to carry a gun. And then the government, they say, those who carry guns are the, best, the worst of you. But you are the one who told me you can carry a gun. So obviously the story is the opposite. Let us hear more from this idiot, so we can see what more he would add. The, the pious, those who are God-fearing, uh -huh. and this is a strong warning from the Prophet mm -hmm. Now, when we judge things, we don't, don't as Muslims, refer to the United Nations. Uh -huh. We don't <clears throat> refer to the Geneva Convention. Mm -hmm. We don't referred to man-made laws okay. made by the disbelievers and the kafirs. We refer to the Quran and the Sunnah. Okay. So if you go to verse 34, mm -hmm. chapter 4, okay. I'm giving you the reference. Those whom you fear their disobedience, mm -hmm. their rebellion. Okay. What to do with them, what, the women? What to do? Then you should advise them. Okay. You should give them counseling. You should remind them of Allah, hmm. of how bad this is, how sinful it is. Okay. And that they are doing something that Allah does not love. Mm -hmm. If this doesn't work, hmm. then you have to abandon them. But this is only in regards of intimacy. So you sleep with her on the same bed, uh -huh. but you don't have any intimacy. You don't mm -hmm. hug her, you don't kiss her, you don't have any Hanky panky. Yeah, give her a face. Hanky panky. And this <laughs> goes on like okay. the issue of advising her for a while, not for a day or two uh -huh. or for a moment or two, maybe for a couple of weeks, three weeks hmm. of advising. Didn't work. Okay. Then abandon being intimate with her for three, four weeks. Okay. This doesn't work. Then the last and third and final resort is to beat them. So. The, Allah doesn't say bring a, a, ba a baseball bat no. to beat them up with no, it. No, we beat them with what? Ibn Abbas, when he, who, who is one of the great interpreters of the Quran, mm -hmm. was asked how to beat them, he said, with this. You see this? This twig? Yeah. If I beat myself <laughs> with it, I'm not going to be affected. He said. <laughs> Here you see the deception, you see? The miswak is a long route. This guy is holding little brush for his teeth and he say, this is how we beat them. How, how, who is a stupid here? I mean, who is going to believe this garbage? So you are beating her now as a last solution and this is beaten by a toothbrush? Are you tickling her or you are beating her? You see the stupidity? Someone saying that the daughter of Bill Gates, she married a Muslim. Well, they are atheists. And for him, he married an atheist. And so, like, what a big deal. Is she, like, different to a human being? This is the miswak. Let me show it to you on the screen so everybody will laugh about what this guy is saying. Look what he is talking about. This is what you beat the women with. And this is after they cut it pieces and they make it small. Let us put it in the screen. Do you see it? It's a long route. Very flexible. They beat the camel with it. It's like even way more harmful than a belt. He took something from his pocket, a small little tiny piece of this, and he said, we beat her with that. 
But in fact, at that time, the Muslims, they carried the whole stick in their hand and they breathed their animals with it. In the same time, they put the end of it in their mouth, which is very dirty. And they chew it. Because remember, the, the penalty is a, it's a, it's a penalty, it's not a reward. You are beating the women so she might obey you. Well, if you gave her a toothbrush tickling, that is not even a beating. You are fooling who? And now because it became expensive, all the Muslim they want to do what Muhammad used to do. So they cut it pieces and they set it. But this is not what Ibn Abbas was holding in his hand, you coward. The miswak is a very long root. It's a root. It's not even a branch of a tree. It is a root. They have to dig in the ground in order to get it. They dig in the ground. And then they get the root, and all of us, we knew how root is flexible. But at the same time, it's hard. And you can tell, I mean, you can see the, 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 the structure of this wood. So they lie and they say, oh, this is not really a big deal. This is what they beat the wife with. <laughs> you see this Abdul is selling them? You see the stick? This is the stick he took from his pocket. <laughs> look how look how small it is. <laughs> I mean, cowardness, lying, deception is a is the business of Islam, brother. It is this you beat her with this, with this, brother, with this. And do you think really people will believe your stupid lie? I remember the purpose of this beating is to make to force the women to obey you. But if you beat her with toothbrush, she will never. I mean, what's the point of this beating then? <laughs> Listen, he said this is the last solution. The la when you hear the last solution, that means it's just something very bad. Well, if you beat a woman with two her brush, she will like it. Maybe even she, may, it might, she might get excited. Imagine this Abdul coming to the bedroom of his wife and he have a toothbrush in his hand to do what? To beat his wife. Look at the branch, how long it is. Do you see it? Do you see how the roots and the branch? And now actually even they are using the branches, not only the roots. Do you see how short it is? Well, he took something from his pocket and said, we beat her with this. Let us go and get them busted from their prophet story. A woman, she come to Muhammad. And her husband, he did beat her until her skin become greener than her clothing. The guy he just said to us, we beat them with the tooth stick, and <laughs> very short thing. Read carefully. Rifa divorced his wife, whereupon Abdul Rahman ibn etc. blah blah blah, he married her. So this was this is a woman, she got divorced. And she got divorced three times. And according to Islam, if you divorce your wife three times, she can't go back to you unless she go and F a new husband. F, not marry only. She have to do nikah, not only marry. So this woman, she married another husband, hoping that she will make him divorce her, obviously, by not sleeping with him. So she can go back to her husband. But look what happened. This guy, he started beating her. And this woman, she was the lady, I actually say, the lady wearing a green veil. And complained to her to Aisha of her husband and showed her a green spot in her skin caused by beating. So what the Muslim used to use? 
they use something will cause a green spot on the skin. Is that a toothbrush he took from his pocket? Let us go back to the toothbrush. <laughs> you beat her with what, brother? It, I'm not gonna be a f <laughs> Show us again, show us. <laughs> this is what he was beating her with. <laughs> So the green is the, the green is spot was caused by this. Let me zoom in so you can see it better. Brother, do you see he beat her with what? I mean, come on. Do you see, brother? This has caused nothing, cause no harm. Okay. So how come the husband he did beat his wife in the time of your prophet? And he made her skin greener than her veil. And not only that, you see, if the guy he did beat her and he made her skin greener than her veil, and Muhammad he said to him, Shame on you, then he's right. This guy right. But Muhammad he took the side of the man. He did not even question the man why there is a green spot in her skin. We can read the whole story. So it's caused by beating. Okay, and then it says, it was the habit of ladies to support each other. So when Allah Messenger came to, uh, to uh, came, Aisha, she said, I have not seen any women suffering as much as a believing woman. So Aisha, she is witnessing that Muslim women are the, they have the most horrible life ever. No women suffer as much as a believing woman. Who is saying that? Not Christian Prince. So, if a Christian prince says Muslim women they have the most horrible, miserably miserable life, he's not lying, because he is just saying what Aisha she was saying, and Aisha she is a first-hand witness, and she is uh, almost God for the Muhammadan. And for sure, not because they respect her, but because she is the sex toy of Muhammad. I have not seen any women suffering as much as a believing woman, which means this is the case for all Muslim women. And this is confirmed the other hadith where Muhammad says that the worst of you is those who complain about their husband beating them. And here we go. A woman, she is coming to Muhammad to complain about her husband beating her. Did Muhammad say to her, you know, like, you are right and shame on you, the man? No, he took her side. Look, the Aisha, she said, look, her skin is greener than her clothes. So it's not only just a spot, it's so deep green. This is how harsh the beating was. When Abdul Rahman, this is the husband, heard that his wife came to the Prophet, came to the Prophet, he came with his two sons from another wife. And she said, by Allah, I have done no wrong to him, but he is impotent, like Muhammad. And he is useless for me, like this, holding her dress, which means he can sleep with her. Abu Abdul Rahman, he said, by, by Allah, <laughs> she had told a lie. I'm very strong and I can satisfy her, but she disobedient and want to go back to Rifa. We will go back to this obedient. Okay, let us say for the sake of argument, this woman, she's lying. The woman, she don't want to sleep with you. What is the solution on Islam? Beat her and rape her. Because that's what Muhammad will say to her now. Allah Messenger said to her, if this is your intention, then you know that it's unlawful for you to remarry Rifa unless Abu Abdul Rahman, he do bang bang with you. By the way, the translation is absolutely false. Muhammad, he did not say unless he have a sexual intercourse. He said, unless he taste your juice, unless he taste the water of your vagina. I can go right now to the dictionary and you will see, I showed it before in the previous uh, video, you can watch it. Usayla is the orgasm. The orgasm. So the woman she is beating now, she, you know, she's the man he did beat her. 
The woman she is coming to Muhammad. Her skin is greener than her clothes. Did Muhammad say anything about why you did beat her? No. Did Muhammad he say why her skin is greener than her clothes? No. Did Muhammad say shame on you? No. Muhammad now is schooling her. If this is your intention, <laughs> you are wrong. He had to rape you. He got to rape you. You cannot go back to your previous husband unless this man he rape you. What kind of justification would be for such a thing? And then he said, the prophet then he saw the man, they saw the two boys of Abdul Abdul Rahman, and asked him, Are those your sons? Abdul Rahman he said, Yes. The prophet he said, You claim what you claim, speaking to the women, i.e., that he is imp impotent. By Allah, those boys resemble him as a crow, resemble a crow. But look at this stupidity. Maybe the man now he cannot do it. And obviously the women she don't want him. Secondly, why a woman she wanna go sleep with the man he's beating her? Number three, what is justice? Why you are forcing the women against her will to go and sleep with the women? Obviously he is bad. So here you see Muhammad saying that you beat your wife to force her to go to bed. You beat her into when? You beat her until her skin is a greener than your clothes. Muhammad he did not say one word about the man. Why you cause those marks? He didn't say, I said to you, beat her with the toothbrush. What, what is this? Okay, no problem, you wanna sleep with her. And uh, okay, I will speak to her. But why you did beat her until you made her skin greener? Muhammad never complained. He took the side of the man and he say, if this is your intention to go back to your previous husband, you should know that you cannot do that unless he tastes your orgasm. In the front hadith, until you taste his orgasm and he tastes your orgasm. The Muslim they translate that as sexual intercourse. Well, for sure it is sexual intercourse, but why you are changing the words? You see here in the same story, they put it there, taste your sweetness, and you taste his sweetness. But this is false translation too. Taste your orgasm. What sweetness? And why they are putting the word sexual intercourse when Muhammad is speaking about tasting your orgasm which means you have really to do your job and make him happy in the bed do you see it? this is why it's very important when you want to talk about Islam to know Arabic because their translation is always a fabrication How in the world, tasting your juice became consummate his marriage with you? This is your taste your juice? <laughs> Look here, translation. Unless and until you enjoy the sexual relationship with him and he enjoyed the sexual relationship with you. What kind of justice the justice is? So you want to go back to your husband? Okay, no problem. Well, you have to F this guy and he have to F you until he enjoy you. And you have to be sure to give him a good orgasm. After he finish, you can go back to the other husband. And this is, by the way, a rule proving again that Muhammad, he abused women in extreme filthy way. 
because why if a man he divorced his wife three times you punish the women not the man and why you allowed divorce to be so easy if you are against it What about saying that the man who divorced his wife three times, somebody have to F him? <laughs> not to F the women. <laughs> because she is not the one who did it. Stupidity is beyond imagination. This is a chapter 2, verse number 2, 30. It's unlawful for you if your husband divorced you three times to take you back unless you go and if a new husband. And if you don't if him good, the other husband will beat you until your skin became a greener. And this is the only way to go back to your children from the previous husband. Because obviously this woman, she don't care really to go to the husband, but most likely she have a bunch of, you know, boys and girls waiting for her at home. She's forced to marry this guy. And you can tell from the story, most likely maybe, that she is lying. Which means the filthy Muhammad and the filthy God of Muhammad, if he exists, he forced this poor woman who she is a victim of divorce. She is not the one who divorced the husband. So the man he divorced the wife and then you punish the wife? Saying to her you can't go back to the husband unless he somebody else if you? And the Quran go far in the abuse of women. To the point, the woman is a goat. If you go in the Quran, you will see chapter 38, verse number 23, speaking supposedly about David, who is supposedly a prophet of Allah, he speak about his wives, saying that I have 99 goat. Do you see it, Muslims? I have what? 99 goats. Question to Muslims. Why the Quran describe the wives of David as goats? Any Muslim can you tell us why? If we go and read the interpretation, the Muslim they will tell you why those women are called goat. Let us read the interpretation. Yeah, what happened to this website? It's not working. Here we go. The official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Why the women, the wives of David, and the women in Islam, they are goat? If I read for you, you will not believe what you will see. Let us see here. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, there is something wrong in this website. Hold on. Give me a second.
Uh, actually, this is the interpretation of the verse before it. Hold on, yeah. The verse after it. Okay. This is verse uh, 24. Let us go to the verse 23. All right. And now... Okay. People I will put from in front of you a reference. I want you to read carefully. And I want the Muslim to challenge me. I want the Muslims to make videos exposing my lies, proving that this is not true. This is the interpretation of Al-Qurtubi. He said that the Arab Let's put it on the screen, give me a second. The Arab, the Arab, they call women goats or sheep. Okay. And here he continue. He says, and she can be called a cow or a female camel because all of them will ride them. So why the women they are called goat or a cow or a camel? Because all of those we ride, including women. Can you believe that this is a religion like this? Translate to English, maybe Christian Prince is lying. Okay. The Arab they refer to women as a goat because and this translation is stupid here because we write the markub, you know, the same as the camel, the same as the cow, al bakara. I mean, I don't know. Google is stupid to, to translate the word bakara as the word bakara. Translate it as cow. So, because we ride them, all of them we ride. Maybe if we open Google Translation and copy text alone will work better. Let's see. Google. Google Translate. All right. Let us copy the text as it is. <clears throat> All right, we go here. And then we go to Google Translation. Let's zoom in. Do you see here? The translation came different. Because all of them, every one of those, we write them. So the women, we can call her a cow. We can call her a female camel because each one of those, the cow, the goat, the camel, will ride them. And now let's think about it. Let us say for the sake of argument, the Arab, they use those terms and they are rude. So why Allah is using them? Secondly, you strip it. What do you mean the Arab? This is David. <laughs> do you see the stupidity? What do you mean the Arab they say that? This is David is talking supposedly. Since when David is an Arab?
So those people, when they speak about women, they do their best to let, put some makeup on the face of Islam to make it look nicer. But in reality is, Islam is the most ugly place for a woman to be. Like one of you mentioned that uh, the daughter of Bill Gates, she married a Muslim. Do this guy dare to, to practice Islam on her? He will never dare. He will be like a potato next to her. She will be riding him. He will not be riding her. Can he beat her? Can he jail her in her room? Do he dare? <laughs> so what kind of Islam he is going to practice with her? He will not practice Islam. He will not dare to practice Islam. But if she is his wife and live in the Middle East and she is nobody, nobody care for her, he will ride her, he will beat her, he will emulate her, he will abuse her. I mean, this is his right. Actually, I always ask myself, why in the world any woman she want to marry somebody believe that she is a goat? Unless she is one. To marry a Muslim man who believes that you are a goat and equal to a goat, well, then you are what he is saying, because you accept the terms and the conditions. Right? Actually, Muhammad, he go way more far in his ugliness against women. Muhammad, he consider every woman is a devil. So when you marry a Muslim, you are marrying somebody, believe that you are an image of the devil. Am I making things up? Read it. This is their prophet, and this is a very authentic report, which means Muslim, they have no question if this is true or not. Muhammad, he was sitting outside with his friends. He saw a woman. Look how decent the man. You see, a man, he is married, and he has tons of wives and tons of sex slaves. A woman walk by, he gets so horny, he leaves his friends to go if his wife, and his wife, she is tanning leather. In case you do not know how hard this job is, you know, you have to boil water, add color, put the leather, blah, 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 blah. It's out of work. And Muhammad is just drinking his tea outside or whatever, drinking. He's drinking ginger. He promised the Muslim in heaven you have a ginger with, with the wine, which is very weird. So, just because the Arab, they, this is what they use for drinking, Muhammad, he promised them, he said, don't worry, you will have it in heaven too. So he saw a woman walking by. He came to his wife, Zainab. And she was standing leather and he had sexual intercourse with her. Then he went to his companion. Look at this filthy. He just went there just to do boom boom. It's like a like a, like a like a mule. And then he said to his companion, who he left them, because now he given an exit excuse why he left. Well, the guy, his penis is uh, in, in trouble. He's decent man. He's keep looking at the women in a sexual way, obviously, because why if a woman, she walk by, you get horny, unless you are looking and thinking about her in a sexual way. Correct? I mean, all of us, we go on the street. Do we get horny just because we see a woman in the street? Are we, are we animals? Are we horses? Are we donkeys? We're a human. The woman, she did not do anything. She is not wearing bikini. This is a Muslim woman walking by, walking, by, walking by and she is wearing a burqa. And now Muhammad, he keep looking most likely at her ass and her ass is like the antenna of sex for him. So he got horny, he go to his wife. And then he said, after he came back, the woman advances and retires in the shape of a devil. But the woman, she did nothing. But look what he said. The women, she advances and she retire. So it doesn't matter what you do if you are a female. Just walk by, you are the devil. You go back home, you are the devil. You come from home, you are the devil. But then if you go and ask those sheikhs, they will say, Islam, respect women. You see, he's not talking about a specific woman. He says, women. 
إن المرأة تدبر في صوت الشيطان تقبل في صوت الشيطان and تدبر في صوت she come in the image of شيطان and she live in the image of شيطان So why in the world any woman she wouldn't marry a Muslim? And by the way, if you are a Christian woman, you can't marry a Muslim. This is not marriage. This is a boyfriend. Maybe you can register him in the court. You know, this is civil court. But marrying, this is not marriage. You see, the word marriage is religious word, and religious word have to be practiced between people believe in the same belief. So in order for me to marry. A woman and I claim to be Christian I have to marry a woman she is a Christian otherwise this is not marriage because marriage you know what the Bible says what God unite no man can divide right so the marriage is done under the name of the Lord not under the name of the pen of the court And we don't have the same Lord to bless our marriage. While Jesus, he ordered the man, he said, okay, you will be the Lord of the house. You are the master of the house. No problem. But you are, you will be the same as a Christ. He gave himself to the church. So the Messiah, he made the women equal to the church, which means the duty of the man is to give himself to his house, to his wife, is to be a servant of the house, even though he is the master. This is why you see Jesus himself, he washed the feet of his own disciples. And he said to them, if you don't do that, you don't belong to me. So the master of the house in Christianity is not the same as the master of the house in Islam. A master of a house in Christianity is a man who loves his wife, take care of her, not a man who beat her. The second you are beating your wife, you are breaking your, the command of God. Where Jesus, he said, the same as the Messiah gave himself to the church, you give yourself to your women. And we know how extreme that is. This is extreme love to the point you go to the cross. You die in the cross for the sake of somebody you, you, you love. In Islam, there's no love in marriage. Actually, we can't even call it marriage. Even the whole Quran keep talking about the word nikah. And we showed you a thousand times that she, the nikah does not mean marriage. Even the Muslim, they say, oh, no, it is. Actually, there's Abdul, he made a video before saying, I will show you the word nikah in the, in the Arabic uh, Bible. And then he, you know, they, they show a, a page of a translation. I check it in the website. It doesn't show that. But maybe in the original uh, translation, it says that. But it's a translation. It's not even done by an Arab Christian. It's done by somebody from Germany who's supposed to speak Arabic. He uses Islamic terms. We don't use this, such a filthy word. If Islam actually give any respect to women, then we should have even the same equal, you know, reward in heaven. Like you see, the guy, he says, we are equal in heaven. How we are equal? The man, he will have a lot of women. Even women in heaven, they will be jailed. They will be literally jailed. Let us see what the Quran is saying. You go to heaven? What kind of heaven this heaven is? You will be restrained in your tent. Do you see it? This is a chapter 55, verse number 72. And no man can see you. And nobody can see you. You will spend your eternity naked in a bedroom. And not only that, 
The husband, if he is a bad, bad person, he will have 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, which means you have 70 versions or 72, each one of them she have 72 maids, if every, and every maid have 72, uh, they call it like a wasifa or helper, and the 72, they have another 72. So if we calculate the numbers, you end like with 5,000 something women. And then Muhammad, he says, with each woman, you will have just the orgasm will be 70 years. I mean, you can tell the guy he stuck with the number 70. So if the man he was going to have, let us say, the first 72, they will have 72 made. And then the other 72 made, they are going to have another 72. Actually, we end with what? We end with 300. No, hold on. One more 72. 26 million and 873 women for a bad Muslim. 72 x 72 x 72 x 72. So you will have 30, 26 millions, almost 27 millions. Then if everyone, this is not the whole sex, just the orgasm, is going to be 70 years, so X70. You have 1 billion and 881 years. To go back to the first woman you step with. To make it simple for you as long as I'm going to sleep with all those women and then with everyone the orgasm alone is 70 years <laughs> are you getting my point so those women which I'm going to sleep with them I if I step with the women today they say let's say women number one in order to sleep with her again I have to come, she will have her turn back after I have 1 million 800, sorry, uh, 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 one, yeah, uh, 1 million 881 years of orgasm. This is just the orgasm alone. This is religion. And not to forget to mention, Muhammad, he claimed that the most people who will go to hell are women. The majority of hellfire is not men, they are women. So Muhammad, he came to the women, he saw a group of women, of women, and he said to them, give me money, give me your ears, give me your jewelries. Uh, why he said I saw the majority of you are going to be in hellfire there will be what the majority of you they will be in the hellfire okay how we can fix that and why women, they will be the majority in hellfire, which we showed you, Muhammad, he believed women are the, uh, are the shaitan. So, I saw the majority of hellfire are women, which means this is it's going to happen. That's it. The majority of women, they will, the majority of hellfire are women. Okay, how we can go to heaven, Prophet? Well, give me your jewelries. Read carefully. Give a charity. Give a charity. For most of you are the fuel of hell. A lowly woman with dark cheek said, Oh, why, Messenger of Allah? He said, You complain a lot. A great deal of complain. You are angry for your husband. Then they started taking off their necklace, earring, rings throwing them into Bilal garment do you see it okay let's say those women are bad they will go to hell so now if I give you my ring I will go to heaven do you see do you see the scam 
This is what they do. All the scammers they do. Like I mean, even there are some people they claim to be Christian, Christian churches. You see in TV those are scammers. They say to you, call us right now, receive the blessing of God, make a donation. Like hold on, hold on. Okay, what? Wait, wait, wait. I mean, he received the blessing of God for doing good, no problem. For helping poor, no problem. But what this is like excitement about like it, if only if we give it to you, we we'll receive the blessing of God. And okay, now we receive the blessing of God because we gave the nation. Are we going to go to heaven now? In Christianity, you cannot bribe, you cannot bribe God. Giving donation to Christian prince doesn't make you go into heaven. No? So now those people, they will go to hell. And now just because they gave their earring and their rings and their bracelet, they will go to heaven? Is that how we can fix it? He did not say to them, you have to change. He said to them, give it charity. Stay as you are. Do it wrong, supposedly, according to him. But just give me your rings. Give me your bracelet. Give me your earring. And those women, they got scared, they got terrified. Okay, this is the Prophet of Allah is saying to us, you will go to hell. So what we do? He said, give it charity. Right? Well, supporting, supporting people who serve a Christ in Christianity is not what will grant you to go to heaven. It is just one of the fruits of you being as a Christian. You see, in Christianity with the Christ, you know, like there is a there's an, an argument, you know, between two churches. One they say we are saved because we do like we have to do good deeds. The other one says no, it's just by the grace. But actually, both of them they are right, because you have no grace if you don't have a fruit, and you have if you have no fruit, you have no grace. To make it simple, Jesus said that from their fruit you shall know them. So Jesus, he will not take you to heaven because you made a donation. But he will not take you to heaven if you don't. Because obviously you are fake. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? So a person who claimed to be Christian and he sees somebody dying in front of his house in the cold. He don't want to help this homeless. He's no Christian. But Jesus, he did not say, this is the only way to go to heaven. But he says, I was hungry and you feed me. I was with all no clothes and you closed me. I was thirsty, you gave me water. I was hungry, you did. So I was a prisoner, you came to me, you visited me. They said to him, Lord, we never did those things to you. When we did those things to you? He said, when you do it to the, my brothers, which means the people like you and me, you are doing it to me. So, Doing the act of a Christian is the fingerprint of a Christ, which means your, your signature as a Christian is doing the act of a Christ. If you don't do it, you are no Christian. So the only proof that you are a true believer is doing what a true believer do. But it's not because you did that, you go to heaven. Because I can be fake and give donation, correct? Is it true? There's many, they give donation to churches that just to show off, just to show that they are giving donation and they go to speak about it, you know, they write a check, they want to show it to everybody. And they are very rich. They put their names in the newspaper. So, helping others is an act of a Christian. It is a fruit of a good tree. So Jesus will know you from your fruits. But those women are giving their earring for what purpose? And how giving your earring and your bracelet is going to take you to heaven? You see, those women, first of all, in the Middle East, and until now actually, we don't have any kind of security. 
like in USA, if you get over 65, you have like a retirement, let's say, uh, you know, a social security payment, something like that. But there, there's no such a thing. So the women, the, their gold, their jewelry, this is all what they have in their life. This is their security. So when this woman, she, this poor woman, she is given what she own. This is what her husband, he gave her when he married her as dowry. So she own it. He's, Muhammad, he just stripped her from everything. If her husband divorced her now, she will get nothing. So why he's asking them to pay? And how in the world he, he saw that most of you, most of people of hellfire are women. So is that will change now? <laughs> you, see, you see how the liar, how, how it works? If you saw already, it was a fake vision or a true vision? The Muslim, they will say to you, Muhammad, don't lie. Okay, so if he saw them in the majority of women, they will go to hell. Well, that mean nothing will change. Secondly, don't the Muslim, they say that this is destiny? <laughs> Do you remember? We played for you the videos about destiny. Do you, do you remember who, who remember destiny so if a man or a woman do something bad according to Islam it was a destiny so what this garbage is about I pay the charity I don't pay charity it's a destiny everything in Islam is a destiny if a man have sex with a woman is that a choice he do or he does? No. It's a destiny. So why women, they will go to hell if everything is destiny? So Allah, he destiny women to go to hell. Read carefully. Muhammad is speaking, saying, Verily Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in in which he of necessity must commit. You see it? Allah, he fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in. Okay, hold on. He just said that the man will indulge in. So why the, why Muhammad did not say most of people of hellfire are men? You see, men usually is the one who kill. Men usually is the one who do women abuse, child abuse, sexual abuse, rape, child molestation like Muhammad. So if you think about it, if it's about justice, the one who should be the majority of hellfire, it should be men, not women. Women usually, not always, they are the most kind, the most peaceful, not always. The most, let us say, most of women crimes cannot go and reach usually. I'm talking about usually the standard. Like if we go and see how many men, many male in jail and how many female, we will find that the number of male are way, way higher. Especially to violent crimes. How many women we saw them, they are doing child molestation. Compare them to men, we will find there is no compare. So why the majority of people of hellfire, they will be women. And as long as Allah is the one who fix our destiny of adultery, and you know, adultery does not happen just by a male alone, right? So when Allah, he made a destiny for the man, obviously he made a destiny for the women too. Because the man, he will not have sex with himself. There's a woman she called the Islamic scholar asking, uh, about she said that she is getting older she became like 30 years old and this is in the, in the Middle East this is a, this is old age you know if you are 30 you are you are at risk that nobody will marry you they like to marry you know very young so she said I'm afraid that I'm not going to get married he said to her uh, my daughter my sister don't worry the prophet he says it's written on every vagina the name of the one who will if her Destiny. It's written there. 
Maybe now that woman, she took her phone, she started taking pictures of her vagina to see if the name of the guy who will F her is written there. Maktubun ala kullu farjin ismu nakihim. It's written on every vagina the name who will F it. And here we ask ourselves if a woman, she is a prostitute, she will have yellow pages there. Uh, there is two eras of a human civilization and uh, do many mean years of God PC before Christ and any two human civilization I will explain that in two quantum. I don't know what you are talking about, Grace. Uh, but anyway, focus with me on the topic, guys. Focus with me, if, especially if you are a female. So when they say what they say, lying to us about women in Islam, this is absolutely a lie. How many? <clears throat> okay, you are a female. Muhammad, he said, describe you, that you are the devil. You come as a devil, you live as a devil. Even Muhammad, he described that the most evil person in the world is a female. And her name is Eve. And all women, they are like Eve. Read it. Muhammad said, if not, if not Eve, there's no woman will betray her husband. A Muslim will say to you, will the Bible blame in Eve for the sin of Adam? This is a true and false. The Bible blame both for the sin. This is why God, he punished them both. Same time, Adam, let us say Adam, he listened to Eve. Why he listened to Eve? And Eve, she was deceived by the devil. And he was deceived by the devil too. Through who doesn't matter. So, Muhammad, he made it clear. He did not blame any, anything Adam did, except on Eve. In the same time, if we go on just to show you the contradiction of this mentally ill man, Muhammad, he claimed that Adam commit no sin. It was destiny too. It was destiny. So why is blaming Eve for the sin of Adam? Here you will see right away the, the stupidity of this man. According to Muhammad, there was an argument between Moses and Adam. Don't ask Muhammad how Adam and Moses they met. So Moses says to Adam, because of you we are out of heaven. Because of you, we are out of paradise. And then Adam, he said to him, Oh, Habibi Moses, Allah favored you. He talked to you. He even wrote for you the Torah by his hand. Do you blame me for an action which Allah written in my fate 40 years before my creation? Okay, hold on. So, and Muhammad, he agreed with Adam. This is why Muhammad, he says, so Adam confuted uh, Moses three times. He repeat that, confuted, which means he refuted him. So Muhammad believed that Adam, he did not commit any wrong, except the plan of Allah, which is written for him to do. And he had no choice at the destiny. And even Allah, he wrote this plan to Adam to commit sin 40 years before he creation created him. Okay. And Muhammad agree that we can't blame Adam for the sin. So why he is blaming Eve for the sin of Adam? <laughs> this is stupidity. Because if I cannot blame Adam for a plan Allah wrote for Adam 40 years before he created him, that means Allah he wrote that Eve, she will do mislead Adam too. Correct? So why he is blaming Eve? Here you notice that we are talking about a person, he is mentally ill. 
This man, he hate women. In the same time, he want to have as many as he can. To the point, even when we want to, he want to sleep with the wife of the Pharaoh, the sister of Moses, the mother of Jesus. Any famous woman, Muhammad want to sleep with her. Allah, he promised her to, he promised him to be in his bed. If Muhammad is exist right now, he will, you know, he will tell them that Allah, he promised me to marry Nancy Pelosi. Because she is the most pretty woman in USA. And the most smart. Do we have any Muslim who have any, anything to say? No, actually, if we want to prove that Muhammad is mentally ill, it's very easy. I mean, you see, Muhammad, he made it clear that he is mentally ill. When Muhammad, he said, and Aisha, she said, that Muhammad, he imagined himself having sex. In fact, he did not. That is a, that's a clear sign of illness, mental illness. The Arab, they, you know, when, when somebody, they can't explain why he is doing that. They say he was bewitched. But we know that this is not bewitched. What bewitched? I mean, what, what does that mean? The guy, he imagined himself having sex, but in fact he did not? So how far his illusion is? Muhammad, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, as an example, he, uh, uh, when he received revelation, he make a sound like a camel. Okay, why you are making a sound like a camel? What is the real reason behind that? If there's a reason if there is a reason that Muhammad he uh, you know uh, he made those noises he hear the sound of a bell I mean all the crazy stuff he do Muhammad, he hear a sound of a bell, and this is how God, he sent his message to him. Muhammad, he sweat so much when he received revelation. Why? He's in the jacuzzi. Muhammad, he said that angels, they will never accompany a person. He have a sound of a bell with him or a bell with him or a dog. Then later we find that Muhammad received his Quran in the sound of a bell. Muhammad, he said, the bell is the musical instrument of shaitan. Okay, if the bell is the musical instrument of shaitan, then how Muhammad receive Quran, which is the musical instrument of Allah, as a sound of a bell? Do you see the stupidity? So we do not need really to prove that Muhammad is mentally ill. It's very clear. Actually, in the book of Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he said that the Prophet, he made a sound like a camel when he received revelation. This is a person is suffering from epilepsy. He makes sounds, he makes growling, he makes noise. He is unaware of what he is doing. Uh, let me see if I can find the hadith I just remembered one but I don't know if I can find it in English let us try here we go Obeyed he said that when the inspiration, what's funny, the Muslim translate, this is the wahi. But all of us, we knew that Muhammad, he received not inspiration, he received delivery from an angel. So how do you call it inspiration? You see, an inspiration, if something comes to your head, in your mind, not a guy, he come and he squeeze you. 
physically but let us go with it so when the inspiration come descend upon Allah messenger he felt burden on that account and the color of his face and there went a change in the translation here I don't know if it's going to be good but what the Arabic is saying that his face gets so dark or gray okay why is somebody receiving inspiration from God he suffer from such a thing this should be a good news he should be happy he should be smiling he should be happy excited but what is happening is the opposite His face looks so sad. A diver, he is saying, a diver, if you want me to talk to you, you need to change your name. Don't make me block you. Change your name. I don't want to call you diver. I mean, it's, it's, how stupid you are even to consider your question. Go change your name and come back and I will answer you for now. But this is the last time you come here with the word diver. I mean, how stupid are you even to call yourself diaper service? Now you said, why your, uh, your God Jesus get tempted by the devil? This is a stupid of you. Because this is the devil tempting Jesus, which means trying. But did Jesus obey him? Did Jesus commit sin? You just give us a verses from the Bible saying that Jesus is God. Because according to your prophet, Every son of an Adam is a sinner. Jesus is not. Why? Because he is not the son of Adam. And if you read, go, if you go to Matthew, the verses you are posting for us, you will see that devil, he tried everything. He said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself. Did Jesus throw himself? So, false statement from a silly low IQ people this is why i see the argument of muslims is very very like like there's a guy he posted in uh in the comment section i don't like to debate but i want to go on to show you the truth and he said david was tempted by god you stupid idiot go and read the verse people will laugh at you david was tempted by allah in the quran let us go there they didn't know their religion what is funny about the Muslims, suddenly they became expert in the Bible, but none of them even know how to read two words in his Quran. The same verses actually we are talking about, about the goats. They're the same ones. Read with me, Allah. So he said, my brother, he have 99 goats, which mean wives. And then here it says, that we tempted David. Translation here says, we had to try him. Okay, how he tried him? He made him go and kill the wife of one of his soldiers. He have a lust of her over her. This is the trial of Allah. So Allah, he tempted David. David did not commit sin according to the Quran. <laughs> Do you see it? If we go and read the interpretation, we will see that David, he sent a man to go to war so he can have his wife, which he saw from the window of his palace, taking shower and she was naked. So who is the one who made David see that? And who is the one who made David kill the man? Allah. And remember, we just showed you Muhammad saying that adultery is something a man he have to do, not he choose to do, because it's a destiny. You remember what we showed you a few minutes ago? So according to Muhammad, Allah, he tried David. 
But what kind of a try if it's a destiny, you idiot? Secondly, he did not tempt him. Even the word temptation is stupid because it's a fixed very portion of adultery which a man he will indulge in. So he have no choice. Which means he have no choice to do or not and he have no choice to ask forgiveness or not. Allah, he wrote the scenario already. Do you see the stupidity? So Allah, he made David do adultery. Okay, Allah, he made David kill the man, according to the Quran, the, the husband of the wife. Okay, and then Allah made David ask for repent. Uh -huh. It's a destiny. Which means none of this really happened. It's a story, it's a fiction story. Because there's an author, his name is Allah, he is writing our pages, and we are just names in a fiction story. Everything we did is written there. Everything we did is not a choice. Everything we did is decided by the author. Do you remember when uh, Mufti Mink, he said, Allah, he know what we will do and we, what we will do not? <laughs> <laughs> which is more hilarious not only he know what we will do we, he will know what we will do not <laughs> let me see if I can find the video hold on Uh, I don't know if this is the video, let us see, let me try. <coughs> yeah, this is not the one, I'm trying to find it. But, but you remember the video, right? He says, Allah, he know. Uh, uh, he know what we will do and what, what we will do not and how Allah he kill you before you do it <laughs> um, let me see if I can find the video Allah knows everything. <laughs> Anyone remember what was the name of the video I played before about Allah? He knows what what we would do and we would do not. Hmm. I'm trying to remember. Okay, let's see if we... Yeah, it might not be easy to find. Okay. Maybe this one. Like this. Okay, we I found a different one, but this one will do. This one is not bad. It's not bad. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. 
Do you see? So the question is, okay, he's a thief. He commit a crime of theft, okay. He's saying, okay, well, hold on. So if Allah, he destiny for me to be a thief, why am I going to be punished for what Allah, he destiny for me? Mufti Mink, he said, well, this is a quite a good argument. I mean, you cannot beat that. I mean, where is justice? If you decide for me what I will do, so what is my guilt? You see the stupidity? So this is a quite... What do you mean there's no sound? No, the sound is... Oh, you cannot hear the video? Oh, okay, sorry. Let me fix that. Okay, let me go back and play. Then obviously, you would be the fool. A man came at the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, according to one of the uh, narrations, uh, he had he needed to be punished because he stole. So he comes to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu and he uses the same line. He says, Oh Umar, oh Amirul Mu'mineen, how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined? My deeds were already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. See, let's repeat again. So the guy is a thief, he was arrested. The caliphate will punish him for being a thief. But all of us, we know all the caliphate are thieves. The caliphate, he's talking himself, he have thousands of females, they are stolen from their family. But you can't steal from a Muslim. You can't steal from non-Muslims. So the guy, he is a thief, okay? And now he said, okay, if it's my destiny to be a thief, and Allah, he wrote for me to steal, why am I going to be punished? This is the question. The sheikh, he agree. This is a quite good argument. We cannot beat that. Amirul Mu'mineen, how can you punish me for having stolen when it was predestined? My deeds were already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's quite a good argument if you were to look at it. Mm -hmm. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was one ahead of this man. He says, well, let's punish this man because it was predestined that we were going to punish him as well. Do you see the logic? This is Islam. Islam, the caliphate have no dignity, no justice. The guy is asking question, the caliphate can't answer. So now the sheikh, he said that the caliphate is ahead of him. It's like we are playing games. He's ahead. He can't refute the question. If I am destiny for me to be a thief, why am I being punished? He could not refute him. He said, okay, it was destiny for me to, to kill you. Do you see the stupidity? But based on this, let us kill each other. It's a destiny. Do you see how dangerous this cult is? If everything is a destiny, that's mean I commit no crime, you commit no crime. If you are a thief, if you are a rapist, if you are a child molester, it was a destiny. This is why we say Islam is not only extremely, the most extreme stupid cult, it is the most extreme dangerous cult because now if I'm a Muslim, I believe whatever I do wrong to you, it was destiny and what I can do about it. So you go and rape a woman and then you say it was destiny. Allah, he wrote that for me. You rape a child, you kill somebody, you rob somebody, it was destiny. My friend, you cannot call me right now because I am not in Skype. And why you insist to call me now? I mean, who are you? Are you Mufti Mink? Why you wanna call me? Where the hell I do call you? Like, the, the one, if when people they see why the hell where, where I can call you, you will think that you are calling an emergency room and you are dying. Maybe you are bleeding. When we open a sky a sky for ten hours, nobody call. When we are not in Skype, they say where well, you hear I can call you. You cannot call me now. It is 12, 17 a.m. in the morning. I'm not going to scream. Because all those who call me are stupid usually. If you don't believe me, just watch the video last yesterday. 
And you know the, the funny thing about Muhammadan, like you know this guy ultimate fault. Honestly, I, I feel sorry for him. I hang up on him because he's I don't know I, I don't, like I don't want to be a bully. But look what he did to himself. He 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 keep chasing me. He want to bully me, and he don't understand that I am being merciful to him when I hang up on him. But yesterday I said, you know, it's time to give him a good spank. We'll remember for the coming century. I mean, and you know, I have to hold my patient really because speaking to such a person is is pain. You know, because I hate stupidity. Honestly, I the most thing I hate is stupidity. You see, I don't go really out with people because I hate stupidity of people. I mean, you go with people talking about stupid things. I don't like it. So, but yesterday, I said to myself, I have to hold myself from hanging on him. I'm trying, you know. So I went with him easy and easy, and he called me names, and he went to call, saying, I'm your daddy, blah, 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 all the insult. And he kept digging for himself, kept digging, kept digging, kept digging, until the hole became higher than his head. And then I buried him alive. And trust me, is he going to stop calling me? No, now he will go more crazy. Because now he want to get back his owner, which is shattered in the floor. <laughs> you know, when you speak to those Abdul, the one who call you, if they ever call you, it's like uh, the Abdul coming to the casino. You cannot win against the casino. You always will lose. So he play, he gamble, he lose. He come back hoping that he will get back what he lost. He lose more, he get more upset. He come back. So they will keep doing that until they go bankruptcy. This is why the smart Abdul, they don't call me because they knew what would happen. You see all those Abdul who say, we debate him only face to face because they knew exactly that they will lose horribly. <clears throat> How you can get even with me? I can't even get even with myself. <laughs> you know, since I was a kid, I'll tell you a story. Once I have a, I have a kid. I mean, I was a kid too in school. So you know, the school they want to take us like to a trip, like a journey. You know, like I mean, in a school trip. This guy, he said to me, can you speak to my dad? He, you know, he listened to you. Yeah, so he can allow me to go. I said, okay, I will talk to him next time I go there. So I spoke to his father, you know, it took me five minutes. I convinced him that, you know, let him go with us. There's no problem with that. And I assure you, he will be fine. Everything will be good. So the father, he agreed, if in one condition, if his son accompany me all the time. So I went outside, I told his son, your father, he agreed, but there is a condition. He said, what? He said, you have to stay with me all the time. He said, I don't agree. I'm not a kid to walk with you. So like now he is became arrogant. I said, but I promise your father, you know, but you will lose. I mean, we are going like our friends anyway, you know, why you don't want to be with us? He said, I'm not going to do that. I said, okay, if you don't do that, I'm going to tell your father not to send you. He said, you cannot do that. You just convince him to send me. Aren't you like, aren't you going to be shy to go there and to tell him, like, how you can even make him change his mind? I mean, you just step the door, talking to him to make him make me go. I said, trust me, I can do it in two seconds. He said, okay, I challenge you. So I went there. I knock at the door. His father opened. I said, hey, I just remember that your son, he have exam next, but let's say Wednesday. And it's true, I just remember, you know, I was thinking how I'm going to do it. So it took me two seconds to convince him. It took me two seconds to convince him against what I convinced him. Don't try me. Never. I can take you to the ocean. And you will not touch the water. So don't be a fool. Like how in the world you want to convince my dad not to send me again? You just left the door. I mean, that would be stupid of you. He will laugh at you. You know, it's, it's very easy. I just went there. I said, hey, by the way, uh, he have an exam. You know, I don't think it's a good idea to go. He said, no way. He have an exam. No way. I'm not going to send him. It took me two minutes. Not even a minute. So when you, when you are debating, there's many things you have to be 
let us say, occupied with, first of all, knowledge. Secondly, God will provide you with wisdom. God will provide you with wisdom. God, he will make you speak. God will lead you to win the fight because you're not fighting for your own. So when we are debating with Muslims, in their side there's the devil. In our side there's the Lord. Knowledge, courage, wisdom, and we are in the side of the true God. So how you can lose? Now, not everybody is good for debate because debate is, let us say, it's a gift as any many things. Like there's somebody have a gift of a nice voice. Somebody have a gift of good in mathematics. It's a gift. So not everybody goes and says, I want to debate Muslim. He can debate Muslims. You have to have a gift. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim have anything to say? Anyone? Any Abdul have any comment? And you know, like when you are uh, debating, you have to be able to like process the information you are receiving right away. This is why I see like all the debates online. We see them online. Like, you know, there's two people, they have a print in their computer in front of them. And they are reading what they prepare a month before the debate. This is not a debate, especially if you are preparing for a topic. A real debate is, and real debaters is, is a person you don't even tell him what the question you know what I mean I mean how in the world we can say there is an exam if we know the questions before the exam so what those people who claim that they are debaters either they are Christians or Muslims they choose a topic and now we know the questions <laughs> so what is left and now we have month to collect information, put it in the front of us in the computer screen to talk about it. So there is no debate. It's a joke. Because both of them really, they are not debating. Can you explain the death stage in Islam 1971? Uh, I, I'm not sure what you mean by the death stage. Can you make your question clear? This is not about death stage. The verse here is speaking is about you going to hell. This is not death. You see, there's difference between death and in the time you go to hell. You go to hell after resurrection, not when you are dead. So this is now your life. So what the Quran is saying, not even one of you, he will not enter hell. So this is not death stages. All right. Any other question? <clears throat> uh, ultimate truth. Uh, okay, guys, this is why he asked me to choose the topic. Uh, well, I am the one he said to you, well, tell me, what do you want to talk about? It's you who said, okay, pick up anything. <laughs> you stupid idiot. <laughs> I said to you, what do you want to talk about? You said, pick up anything. <laughs> and then you pick up and people laugh at you. The recording is still there. Look, I, ultimate fault. I, I don't know how in the world even you come here. I thought you would disappear for a century. And look what ultimate fault is saying. He got me busted. Okay, ultimate fault. As long as you get me busted. Did you pause the video on your channel? 
people if this guy he got me busted then he should put that video as it is in his channel what do you think if you don't it's mean you are ashamed of it so why you don't download the video and put it in your channel ultimate fault I'm just a question I mean as long it is you made victory if I am you I will be you know uh, I will be so excited to have it in my channel not only that I will share it everywhere I will share it in Facebook and Twitter so why you are not doing that the answer is very simple you wish to make it disappear because everybody can see that we got you busted you got Allah busted Allah don't remember which one he created first it is you who said to me in the video what is the last thing I said you said the last thing it was the lamp in the lower heaven okay the lower heaven not only heaven not only heaven the lower heaven okay the lower heaven you stupid idiot repeat more yeah you repeat more lower heaven and by the way this is another stupid thing so in the lower heaven only there's names <laughs> And then you continue, you continue, you continue. And then we ask you to read the other verse. Okay, what is the last one? <laughs> he said the mountains. <laughs> so Abdul, as long as you are proud about it, I challenge you to load the video in your channel. Otherwise, you are a son of Muta. Be a man. Stop being a boy of Muta. Be a man. And not only this, hold on. This guy, he said he go by Quran only. So what he do? He go to a website or a, a translation of a guy. His name is Rashad Khalifa. And we got him busted and he agreed that there it says, and after that. And what? After that. In the book of Rashad Khalifa, there is no after that. He took it off. And what else? He put a shape of an egg. So look what you did. Not only we got you busted with the fabrication, trying to answer us always, we got you busted that you are a false believer because you are accepting a Quran different from the Quran of Allah. This guy, he took the sentence, a whole sentence, and after that, he took it away. And then he add a new sentence. He made the earth egg-shaped. When every single person who speak Arabic in you, there is no word of egg-shaped there. So my friend, you are a fraud like the one you follow. This guy, even he claimed to be a messenger, Rashad Khalifa. That's why the Muslim killed him, because he claimed to be a messenger. So you are stupid, even to, even the Quran you choose to read it from, proving the stupidity you are suffering from. Right? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, and, and by the way, this guy, Rashad Khalifa, he took like many, This the reason he took those sentences from the Quran, because he was trying to make a calculation, uh, math calculation to make, you know, you know, the miracle of number 19, this guy is the one behind it. And this is why the Muslim killed him, because in order to do it, he have to cut a lot of verses from the Quran, a lot of words, he took them off totally. In Arabic, not only in English, you know. So, uh, ultimate fault. As long as you are happy, and I'm so happy that you are okay. I was afraid that you would do something wrong to yourself after what happened yesterday, you know. But I'm so glad that you are okay, and you are happy. But now, please, I have a requirement from you. Download the video and post it in your channel. Otherwise, people will be laughing at you. Prove to everybody that you are the winner, and load the video on your channel. Is that fair, guys? Load the video in your channel. Any Muslim who debate me, you are more than welcome. I, I don't, I don't want to call it a debate. Actually, you are just all of you are a bunch of kids. But for the sake of argument, we call it an argument. As long you are happy, anyone who call me, I beg you 
to download the video of your call to me and load it again in any form you wish. If you don't do that, that means you are the one who is ashamed of it, not me. For me, I don't keep videos on my channel because most times they keep a flag in my channels. Otherwise, my videos are over and I ask people to do download them. So I'm not even asking you most time to download them. Very simple. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Do you remember this guy with his name from Malaysia? They asked him why you don't debate Christian Prince. He said, this guy is finished. Why? Because uh, Imi Hijabi made a video. <laughs> you finished, boy? <laughs> and then two weeks after, he was arrested for porn. What kind of porn? Child porn. What his name, this guy? What his name? I'm not going to debate Christian Prince. He is finished. So he said, um, uh, challenge uh, David Wood, you know, okay. Uh, two weeks after he was arrested for child pornography in Malaysia. They trace him. Mukhayyar Laysa Musayyar. Well, this is against your religion, Abdul. You see, this guy, he claimed to know Arabic. He claimed to be an Arab, supposedly, and maybe he's an Arab. But, and he says, no, in Islam we are we have a free will but this is absolutely false you have no free will and we can show you tons of reference you are an ignorant in your religion and this is the quran everything happened to you it is a destiny from allah Do you see it? Chapter 57, verse number 22. And for sure, we can even give you the explanation and the interpretation. Actually, we just played for you the, the sheikh saying to you, it's a destiny. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny when the Muslim, they say, we believe in a free will. When their prophets say the opposite, the Quran say the opposite, their sheikh say the opposite. And then Abdul in the chat, he say, we believe in free will. <clears throat> Uh, we just showed you even the sin of Adam was not a free will even Adam himself he committed sin written as a destiny in the book of Allah 40 years before his creation and Adam saying to Moses are you going to blame me for a destiny written for me in my fate 40 years before my creation and then you eat it you say to me we believe in free will And then your prophet agreed with Adam, so Adam he refuted Moses. In the same time here, you notice that there is something stupid about Muhammad, because how Muslim they say that Moses was a Muslim, and this is Moses. Moses after death he believed in the original sin. See, Moses is not a Muslim for sure. Muhammad confirmed that because how Moses is a prophet of God, and he do not know a simple believe of this God Muhammad God because Islam based on that original sin is a wrong idea we don't believe in the original sin of Adam Christianity is based on the opposite so as you see here Moses he believed the same as the Christians right <clears throat> do we have any Abdul What this caliph, Christian Prince, what does that mean? What answer, sister? Don't use, don't put your word, Islamic word, before my name. I'm not a caliph. I don't want to be a caliph. This is an insult. You know what caliph mean? It means I am the one who took over after Muhammad. Why? I am a child molester. Am I a sex offender? I am a rapist or am I a thief? What made me a caliph? This is what the caliph is.
Okay, Mr. S1, I'm going to take your call. Don't go. Guys, Mr. S1, he is saying he um, I'm seeking somebody who speaks Arabic. Can he speak Arabic? Okay. Hold on. Give me a second. Are you happy? Even though I don't like to take call at this time because I don't want to scream. Please don't force me to scream. It's, it's, it, is, it is after midnight. So let me call you. Send me a text message in Skype, please. <clears throat> I want to see how good you are. Here we go. People get excited now. I hope that you are what you claim to be. <coughs> text me. Just text me and I will call you right away. I'm logging in Skype. Okay, I am in Skype already. Text me, my friend. Are you there? You see, you keep saying how I'm going to call you, how I'm going to... Here we go. Text me. Until now, I received no text from you. <clears throat> text me and tell me what's your name there, because I have a million people texting me in Skype every day. So I open my Skype, I will find tons. <clears throat> Are you there? What happened to you, the Arabic speaking person? S1, are you there? <clears throat> Did this guy disappear? Maybe he was trying to make a show in front of some Muslim girls that he is a hero. I did call after you pointed out. You cannot call me, you have to text me first because I have to add you. Text me, what's your name? What is your name in Skype? <clears throat> Don't waste my time. What is your name in Skype? What is the problem, Abdul? What's your name in Skype? You texted me, what's your name? Okay, tell me, what, uh, tell me what's your name so I can see. I have a million texts there. Is your name the same as one you are using here? I don't see any of them. I see somebody, his name is Nassim. Are you Nassim? Or Naim, sorry, Naim. Which one is you? And this one is, you know, he did from long time. What is your name? <clears throat> hey, ultimate, don't come here again. Just go. We are done with you. Don't even come to chat here. You are just a stupid idiot. We have no time for kids. We spanked you yesterday, that's it, I give you a chance. If you are a man, go and download the video posted in your YouTube channel. Because you're supposed to yesterday, you got me busted, so what do you want more? That's it. S1. Here we go, I receive a text. Let us see from who. Ah, this is you? Okay, so how you call, why you are calling yourself Manjan? Okay, Manjan. <coughs> Uh, 
All right, I'm I'm trying to call you. <coughs> It's connecting, I don't know. Let us hope it's going to work. No, it did not work. It says you are not online. Let us try again. Don't call me, let me call you. Let me try again. Don't call from your side. <coughs> hmm. Okay, let us see. I will add you. Maybe that will help. Okay, I will I will stop calling you. You call me now. Let us see. I just added you because from my side is not working. Call me. You call. <clears throat> see, I called you three times. It says no answer. All right. Hello. Hello? I called you three times. It says no answer. I hope it's not ultimate fault. Are you there? You know he's your daddy. Hey, just a stupid idiot, son of a mother. I mean, diarrhea. It's stupid. We, we, thought, we thought you are a duck. It turned to be a chicken. <laughs> Didn't you have enough? You made me, you made me vomit, you stupid idiot. Potato. You knew he was in there. I mean, didn't you have enough, honestly? <laughs> I'm telling you, now he will do it more. He will go crazy because what happened yesterday was horrible. So he will do it. He will call more. Now he will change his name. He will call again. <laughs> I just receive a, a text. Okay. Hey CP, I wanted to confirm. Uh, okay, and then, sir, my parents are now ex-Muslims. I'm not going to show the name. Let me so let me do this. Hold on. <coughs> Ah, this is the lady who called me before. You remember her? She is saying now that her parents are now ex-Muslims. My parents now are ex-Muslims and my dad is a big fan of yours. Thank you very much for helping us getting out of this cult. You are welcome, my dear sister. We are happy for you. <coughs> Um, but be careful, don't listen to Ultimate Fort because he's very convincing. He will make you convert to Islam again now. <laughs> you know, I know it. I know it that this is Ultimate Fort because Ultimate Fort, he shared many things. First, he is a stupid. You know, like there's, there's, there's something in his... I, I'm not going to say why. I, I know it's him. Uh, extremely stupid. <laughs> Even before he talked, I said, I hope it's not ultimate fault. <laughs> and it was him. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, you know the Quran says the the shape of the egg, brother, the, sh the shape of the egg. Like what the heck? So why all the Islamic translation, which is accepted by Muslim, none of them say is the shape of the earth, the egg. Are they missing the egg? <laughs> the shape of the egg, brother. The shape. <laughs> and why it doesn't say and after that what happened to after that who who ate it <laughs> maybe they cook it with the egg <laughs> they make lasagna <laughs> see this is the most translation for the verse it says and after that he spread the earth <laughs> In, in Rashad Khalifa translation, there's no after that, it's gone. <laughs> and the, the earth became a. Have you, maybe they are talking about spreading the egg? <laughs> and after that, he spread the egg. I mean, it makes sense. Okay, well, when you cook it, what happened? You break the egg, you hit it in the, in the fryer, and it's going to spread. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Latina, she is asking, uh, don't you get emotionally uh, exhausted? You know, the Muslims don't make me exhausted, but what make me exhausted sometimes is the Christians. You see, because, you know, sometimes you get frustrated with the Christians. We repeat, we say um, the same thing a thousand times. Still, somebody will ask you, and he come always here. He will ask you the same question which we answered, you know, two months ago, many times. So, I, you know, Muslim, they don't really frustrate me. But uh, I give a Muslim a chance to talk to me once, twice, three times. After that, if this person is useless, there's no point. I mean, that's it. Okay, record it, post it there. If you claim that he have a victory over me, then wonderful. Post it in your channel. They don't do that because simply they got busted. So... Talking to Muslims is not really what make me uh, upset. What make me upset if I see that the Christian are not learning. Because the purpose of what we do here, I'm not speaking to this Abdul to make fun of him. I mean, he is a stupid, what I can do? I have to laugh. It's not, it's not really a choice I do. So it's a comedy coming forward. It's like part of the package, <clears throat> you know, this... This guy, he call you, he says stupid things, you have to laugh. It's not like a choice I do. I have to laugh, what I can do? So the purpose is not to laugh at people like this ultimate fart. The purpose is to show people, here there's an error, here there's a mistake, here how you answer them, here how you get them busted. So we are here a school for the Christians, so they can learn, and at the same time a school for the Muslims to know and to learn how to get busted. And they are getting, you know, they are, they are getting degrees. <laughs> and you know, the funny thing about Muslims, <clears throat> they are the only nation, they lose a war and they claim they won. I will give you an example. Now, you know, October, month of October. Okay. The war of 6th of October, all Muslim countries who share that war with Israel, they celebrate victory. But that war, they, they, were, they were destroyed. They celebrate every war they have with Israel. But they are the one who lost. I mean, they lost Jerusalem, they celebrate. They lost the Jordan Height, they celebrate. They lose the Sinai, they celebrate. They lose half of Jordan, they celebrate. They celebrate victory. And what you can do, straight crazy nation, you know? So, uh, uh, but celebrating a victory doesn't make you have a victory. Because reality is different. <clears throat> Do you, if you believe in solar feed, what is solar feed? I don't know what is that. Is that like a kind of a tomato salad? What solar feed mean? I don't know what is that. Is that a religion? Well, it's too late. I just closed because it turned to be that this is the ultimate fault. You know, when we ask him a thousand times, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Alex or oh, Excel, 
uh, you know, there's no need to talk about what happened to Aisha, but I mean, everybody should ask himself. A man at the age of 54, marrying a child at the age of six. If the Muslim is saying he did intercourse when she is nine, but still she is his wife at the age of six, why he married her then? Why he married her? So obviously this man, if he really did not have intercourse with her, obviously it's a, this is a proof that she was too little for intercourse. Obviously, Muhammad is a child molester, is a pedophile, and he is a monster. And when Aisha, she is nine, Muhammad now is 57. What they share together. See, when a man he marry, or let us say have a partner, let us say even a girlfriend, what is the purpose of this relationship? If the women and the men, they have only one sharing, which is the bed, because what Muhammad was discussing politics with Aisha at the age of nine? Was he discussing religion at the age of nine? So what she can share with him? But here we notice that even sharing bed is not an interest for Aisha, she is a child. Even the hadith confirmed that Aisha, she was playing with her swine and playing with her toys even when she became 14. So even at the age of 14, still she's a child. So what they share together? What is the interest of this man? Obviously, he is a perverted man. You know, this is an act of a person. He is a perverted. Because there's nothing to share. <clears throat> Anything else? You see, like you might see somebody he is 80 years old and marrying someone she is 18 years old. Okay, at least she is a female, grown female. Uh, she, you know, she have what, like, I mean, she, she is a woman at this age. And there's an exchange of benefit. Let us say the man, he is wealthy. The, the woman, she is poor, but she is 18. So the exchange is, he will be a provider, but she is not the dream husband she is looking for, but she accepts because she is poor. But what is the exchange between Aisha and Muhammad? You know what I mean? What is the exchange? She is a child. He is a very old man compared to her. Based on what Aisha is saying, there is 50, 50, two years old, sorry, uh, uh, no, it's, it's uh, his, his 54. So there's 48 years different between them. And not only 48. You see, if Aisha, she was 20 and Muhammad was 50 older, I would say, okay, she is still, um, uh, you know, a lady. But she is just a kid. <clears throat> okay, uh, Mr. Uh, S1. Uh, how come when we asked you to give me your Skype, you did not mention it, and now you are mentioning it. Is that you again, ultimate fart? <laughs> okay, I will give you one more chance. <laughs> I will open Skype again, <clears throat> just for you. Let us see if you are not ultimate fart. All right. Well, I don't see anything from your name coming to me. I don't see such a name is texting me. Where is your name texting me? It's one. There's nobody text me with such a name. Text me now. You must be ultimate for it, aren't you? Yeah, he's a stuck. That's it. 
he will now he will he will call way more than before because now he is I mean what happened yesterday is a disaster because usually I don't have patience to stay talking to this guy for more than 60 seconds so yesterday I was holding myself and we you know I gave him what a 15 minute 20 minute <laughs> maybe more <laughs> You know, this, this guy, uh, Ultimate Fart, is like uh, a stalker. You know a stalker? <laughs> it's not my fault if you are stupid. <laughs> it's one, he is not opening his Skype because if he's, he said he call, he texts me, right? There's no text coming from him and there's no call coming from him. Because if I there is, I will see a uh, uh, missed call. I can show you all the names I received from them call in the last uh, one hour. Or text, let us say. None of them is him. There's a guy, his name is Leo. You are not Leo, you said your name is S1. There's a guy, his name is Naeem. And this guy, he called yesterday, actually it's not even today. So where is your text, Ultimate Fart? I don't see you. A joker. <clears throat> yeah, obviously he's a joker. And now if I exit Skype, he will say, I'm texting you. <laughs> I do not need to send it to my friend. Just, you see, always when I show you something in the screen, especially if it's in English, you can just go and look for certain words. Like let's see, he says, she was six years old. Type that in the search engine. You will find it. Why you are asking me to send it to you? Because you might watch my video in any other channel. Always learn how to find the same reference. Google will help you. This is sunnah.com where Muslim they have the translation of the hadith. But this website does not have everything. But as long as I'm showing you in the same website, obviously it is in the website. So S1, are you there? Abdul, until now I got nothing from you, so you are obviously you are an idiot. What a liar! All right. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, it's okay. I mean, you don't know. I mean, who is those kids? The the funny when you bring, uh, you know, like when when the Muslim they say to you, "I will bring my sheikh," and then their sheikh he call us, and then we everybody laugh at his sheikh. Then he say, "This is not a sheikh, but you are the one who brought him, and you are the one who said he is a sheikh," you know. So it depends on what would happen, right? If they're shaky, do good. He is a shaky, he's wonderful. And you will notice that all of them, they share one thing, the bully, you know, they are bully. Like, you know, the Christian prince wearing burqa. There we go. Why Christian Prince from Brooklyn? Because he is not showing his face. My friend, I don't look good. I look so scary. I don't like to show my face. What's your problem? As long as you don't talk to people who don't show their face, why are you even mentioning my name? 
What's your problem then? I just focus on the one who show his face. Idiot. Your God don't show his name is his face. Right? <clears throat> I like the video made by this uh, Christian from I think he's from Pakistan. He went in the front of the mosque of this uh, potato guy, uh, his name Uthman, and he asked him to read, to write a verse. <laughs> he ran away. <laughs> Here we go. This this is Christian. He is I don't know how much he know about Islam, but he got you busted in two seconds. This one just get lost, man. Just get lost. I have nothing from you. You're a liar. Get out of here. I have no time for kids. Now, let us see. How many people here are from Indonesia? Give me one if you are from Indonesia. How many people now join us from Indonesia? Give me one. Because this time it is it is noon time for you, right? In Indonesia, are you guys join us and you are eating? <laughs> okay, we have one, two, three, four, five. Don't give more than one. Man, a lot of people from Indonesia. Okay, okay, that's good. That's wonderful. Malaysia too, all right. Japan, a lot of people from Asia, I can tell. <clears throat> By the way, I really like Asian people, you know. <clears throat> I, uh, for some reason, I feel that Asian people, they are, uh, let us say, I mean, there's, there's many good positive things, more than the negative, but, but there's negative for sure. As an example, negative things about Asian, they are very emotional. You know which means they can switch like weather like in a second you know from happy to sad but generally speaking Asian people are really wonderful people and uh, maybe the good thing about them that they are emotional because we are a human we don't want to be like a steel you know so uh, it's good to have somebody he feel for you you know a friend or uh, neighbors or somebody he feel for you somebody he feel your sadness, your happiness. So Asian, they have different, let us say, uh, nature from, uh, uh, let us say, European or white people. Uh, they are more friendly, they are more open, they are more uh, family oriented. <clears throat> but again, every group of people, they have some negative and positive. As an example, European people, they have something very good which is they don't put your nose in your business. In Asia, no, they put your nose in your business. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, Filipino people are wonderful too. Actually, I like Filipinos because they are very family people. You know, I saw some Filipinos. They have kids. They are not their even their kids. You will see somebody he's taking the cousin of the cousin of the cousin child which means even the child is not even like something <clears throat> directly related to him they adopt children just because they are from cousin 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 of the family and they spend their money on them they buy them gift they grow up in the house they treat them as their own very wonderful you know that's a very very nice thing so there's one thing about filipinos they are very very close as a family you know they support each other you see you will see someone working which is might be negative too uh, like spending his life working in Saudi Arabia to send all the money he have to spend in his family poor guy you know so there, there are those things you don't really find between Western in general you know like in the West you become 18 go fight a job that's it you want to stay home you have to pay 
generally Eastern people, they have different culture. Like for us as a Middle Eastern, if a, if a female, she stay in the house even until she is 60, you know, she's welcome to stay. And nobody will force her to leave. And I saw sometime videos on YouTube, uh, a girl, she is saying, I convinced my mom to let me stay in her place and I will pay a, a rent for the room. For us, this is something impossible to happen. For us in our tradition, this is shame, you know. This is impossible. <clears throat> so, every culture has some negative and positive, but Asian people in general, I believe, they have a lot of positive things. Um, yeah, we have people from Iraq, people from Syria, wonderful. You wish that your boys can move out now at 18? Well, I don't think this is a good idea because you see, when you make your son move at 18 or your daughter, then you expose them to a lot of risk. They are still young to make right decision. That is not a good idea. You see, 18 is not really good to be alone. You know, for me, at 18, I mean, <clears throat> depend for sure, like in some, some places, 18 years old is a man, is a grown man, right? But in, in the West, he is not yet. In the Middle East, we, we have a harsh life, very harsh life. So a person, he is uh, 13 years old in the Middle East, he experienced something a person, he is 20 years old in the USA did not experience. <clears throat> same for people who they are like in the Philippines or in uh, let's say countries who have a lot of suffering a child he go to work when he is two years old you know so that for sure he is not going to wait for his 18 he's already in the street but those they have no choice it's not because this is the best for them but because mm, their family are very poor so I advise you, if you have a children, don't wish them to go out of the age of 18. Let them establish themselves, help them. They're your kids. You don't want them to go and associate themselves with some people doing drugs, you know, bad friends. <clears throat> this is where you destroy your children, actually. You know? But anyway, uh, for me, I find that this is not right. But maybe for you, you can make it right. I don't know. For me, I believe this is not right. <clears throat> All right, in America and Jordan. All right. About Mary and Jesus painting in Kaaba. Well, you know, the Kaaba, it was like uh, the expo of Imarat for religions, you know. So obviously there was many religions there. And this is telling you that Islam is the one who uh, destroyed the freedom of the Arab. The Arab, they used to be very, uh, you know, I mean, very friendly to each other as an example. When the Muslims say to you, there's a 360 gods around the Kaaba, correct? That means there's 360 religions in one space, and nobody killed anyone. Islam came, peace is gone. So, even the pagans, who they are pagans, they were not satanic as Muhammad. Correct? Because how those people they are or they have 365 according to Muslims 365 God 365 idols and all of them they are exist in one space in one like a hundred meter <clears throat> that's mean those people they are very very uh, you know tolerance to each other we worship his God, I worship my God, nobody can anyone. Okay. Islam come, 
freedoms disappear. Well, no, there's nothing inside the Kaaba. The Kaaba is just a room, you know, and before it used to have no roof. If you have my book, you will see that uh, the roof, they add the roof for the Kaaba because other people who have other Kaaba, they used to come and throw garbage on the Kaaba from the top of the wall. And this is why they put in a roof to prevent throwing garbage inside the wall. Otherwise, there was no roof. So it's just a room. Actually, there's videos on YouTube for inside the Kaaba. For now, they have marble. It's a small room. It's not even, you know, <clears throat> there's nothing. Ultimate Farmer, the Bible Channel CP. Well, you know, I'm waiting for the Lord to make me decide to, the, to go for it. You know, when that will happen, I will let you know. <clears throat> well, I'm not sure about the numbers. I mean, when they say 365, this is what they say. I mean, in their books saying that, but we don't know if this is true or not. But obviously, there's many gods. And those people, they are fine with it. And Allah was one of them. Wherever Islam goes, this is the experience. I mean, if we don't learn from history, then history means nothing for us. Wherever Islam goes, peace disappear. Go find and go check now all the wars in the world, where it's happening. All terrorism. You will find Islam behind it. <clears throat> You are trying to do build Murtad Center. Okay. Well, you know, <clears throat> you do not need to build a center as a physical building. You can always create a movement, even if you are just one person in your computer. If we if we ask now the Indonesian, how many people watch the videos of Christian Prince? You will say to me, there's millions. Okay, that's wonderful. But Christian Prince himself, he never thought, I never thought, to be honest with you, that one day, people in the end of the world, I mean, I never met them, I never saw them. They will be listening to my videos, the videos will be like, a, you know, make a big difference for them. So you can do the same. It's not a center. It's not a building. It is an individual. He has faith and he fight for it. An individual who have faith and he have the truth and he is wise or she is wise it's not really a building you know they will say to you Christian Prince and his team they think I have a company you know my, my you know I have a friend uh, you know you know him like Osama Duck Dog Sometime he receive emails from people asking him to talk to my secretary. They think I have secretary. <laughs> Can you talk to secretary of Christian Prince? <laughs> so they think like I have an organization. I have an army of people who work with me. I'm just a normal person like you. I'm right now. I'm talking to you wearing my not my short. It's cold now. But usually I'm wearing my short. <laughs> you know. So you can build a center. And you can be the center without being inside the center. So I encourage you all, don't ever think that you can make no difference. You see, when I start talking, I mean, my English is funny. People make fun of my English always, even now. For sure now it's way better than before, you know. So, I mean, there's a lot of challenges around you. I mean, look what I did. Not only... I wrote books in English. I see if in Arabic it's it's very acceptable, you know. In English, look how challenging the 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 the, 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 the journey is. So, if you are a person who is willing to walk, you will go to the end of the road, and that end is victory. But if you are a person, anything can make you disappointed, feel down unhappy, de depressed, you know, like I see some people on YouTube without saying names, 
you know, he will go. It's today, guys, I feel sad. You know, it's today. This guy, he don't fit to be speaking about Islam because Islam will bring you stress. You have to be strong. Today I don't feel good, and you know, etc. And my wife, etc. And etc. I mean, even they go, they go and they tell the stories what's happening in their house for everybody. Why you want to do that, my friend? If you don't fit for the fight, don't go for the fight. You have to be spiritually strong, mentally strong, confidence, and nothing can make you retreat because they will try everything to take you down they will threat you if you are a male they will send you women imagine i remember once uh this was a long time ago i was in paltok a girl she came to the chat room and she said christian prince i am from a mexican i'm thinking to convert to Islam. can i have can i talk to you in private so like, you know, okay, I'm a Christian and oh no, this is not good. I don't want her to convert to Islam, right? So it's the normal thing. I would say, okay, well, hold on. Don't do that. You know, I will talk to you. So uh, she called me in Skype and uh, I was showing her verses about women, hadith, etc. How Islam look at women. And then her camera opened. And I said, you do not need to open the camera, please sit down. I said, I don't know how to do it. The camera open by itself when I call you. I said, okay, no problem. You know, she said, so should I hang up and go? You know, so like she made it like as a condition to talk to her, the camera is open. And then when I'm talking to her, you know, I noticed that uh, the shirt and her chest is going down. Like she is pushing it, she is putting it down, you know, like it's extending. And then I felt something fishy. Because I said to her, so you know nothing about Arabic? She said, no. The room behind her is kind of dark, but I look at the wall at the end of the room. It's a long room. It's like a salon. I saw a Quran, you know, like, you know, the writing Quran, like art, you know, at the end of the wall. And so I said, so you do not know Arabic, right? I said, she said, no. And then in the same moment, somebody opened the door and he spoke to her in Moroccan, accent Moroccan accent so what they were trying to do they were trying to send me a woman to tempt me maybe he will do something wrong maybe he will get tempted maybe we can get him busted maybe we can record him this is how low they can go they send me a woman from their own So they can go so far with their evil. So she is not a Mexican. She have an accent. Actually, she fooled me with the accent she's speaking. I thought she's a Mexican. She's a Moroccan. She's a Muslim. And they sent her. So when you go to fight Islam, they will do anything you can imagine to stop you. anything like when they harass uh, David Wood they start posting pictures about his wife or apostate prophet all of this is harassment so they make you feel frustrated make you feel that you are threatened they want to make you feel uncomfortable so when you go in this field you have to be ready because you are fighting the devil the devil himself. Uh, and you know, the funny thing is, let us say, uh, this guy is, you know, uh, let us say that they were successful to tempt somebody, he is a Christian. Okay, well, and so what? I mean, he, uh, if he is a priest, maybe this is a, will be bad, but every man, is a man at the end of the day and he can be tempted so you proved what still your prophet is a perverted man <laughs> and actually by doing that you prove to us that your prophet obviously is a perverted because if you are willing to send your sister to strip for a christian person just to refute that person that islam is good <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, but Islam is dead, you know. Uh, uh. Uh, what happened to that number? I don't know what number is that. If you if you try to ask me a question, make it clear. Otherwise, I will not understand what you are saying. What number? Uh, we have a Muslim. His name is Azam, and Azam is saying CP is an idiot. Uh, Azam, why I am an idiot? Do you like to explain to us, guys? He's a Muslim, and he is saying Christian Prince is an idiot. Why? Can you please help us? See. We don't do what Muslims do, like if somebody he says something against what me, I would block you. I will block you if you keep saying he's an idiot, he's an idiot, but you don't tell me why. So can you tell me why I'm an idiot? I'm listening, go ahead. Guys, aren't you interested to know why Christian Prince is an idiot? See, people are waiting for you. Look, even I put it in the screen so everybody can see what you said. Here we go. We publish it for you. I want everybody to see what you wrote. So? What age I start debating? Well, if I want to say a first debate ever I had, I was like, you know, uh, let's say, I mean, almost a teenage. You know, I was just a kid. It was actually about D-Dat. They brought a videotape of D-Dat and they asked me to watch it with them. And then I got them busted. I said, this video, obviously, because I, my English is not too much good at that time. And actually, it still isn't good. Uh, but I said, look, you know, play the video again. You will see that there is somebody who cut the video because the question had nothing to do with the answer. This is the first thing I encounter really as a, let us say, uh, a real argument. So Azam, are you there? <clears throat> I will tell you why, because you cannot explain the contradiction in the Bible about Judas' death. Well, no, we can explain, and you are, an, you, know, you are a stupid idiot, because when the Bible says that Judah he killed himself, and the Bible says that Judah, he fell down and his body shattered because simply he hung himself. And then when, when your body uh, decay, your body will fall down and then your, your, your body will shatter. So you're stupid. Here we go. We answer you. Took us two seconds. <laughs> you see how stupid you are? If I say... As an example, your prophet Muhammad, he died because of poison. Huh? Okay. And then the prophet, his belly explodes because the hadith says, but antenna, he smell, he stink. So if he keep, you know, which means his belly go, grow full of gas. So if, if you leave Muhammad for a few days more, his belly will, 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 will shatter. So if I say Muhammad, he's like, like Muhammad who his belly shattered. When he died, I'm not lying. This is what happened. You are just a silly person. However, as um, are you willing to call me and let us talk about contradiction? In the same time, as long there's a contradiction in the Bible, so how your stupid Quran says that I confirm what is between their hands? As um, eh? The Quran confirm the story of Judah with us because the Quran says, I accept what is with them. <laughs> so look how stupid this religion is. How you explain to us the contradiction? So why the Quran confirming the contradiction? You are a dummy like your prophet. That's why if you call me, I will make you shish kebab in two seconds. No, I do not need to pull them up. I know what happened. Both of them, they describe the same story. A person who hang up himself, and then after a few days, his body will decay, and he will fall down, and his body will be shattered. You're an idiot, like your prophet. This is what you have against us? I mean, try with something even like 
try harder and now answer if if we assume that what you are saying is true so how your stupid God says confirm what is with them the gospel and the Torah what is between their hands whatever with us read the Quran in front of you chapter 2 verse number 89 potato so this is what you are excited with you know you go to Muslim channel they told you this Christian cannot explain that this is a contradiction it's a contradiction for the fool not for us watch the video of yesterday and laugh and see how Allah he is God but he don't remember which one he created first the mountains or the stars <laughs> you are adding to scriptures haram well okay if I am adding to the scriptures, so you strip it how your prophet he swear on it and he confirm it see you're, you're refusing to answer what I'm showing you I'm showing a screen if I am adding to the scriptures why you strip it prophet in his Quran accepted okay I will bring up the scriptures are we going to call me Azam are you willing to call me in front of everybody you show me the contradiction in the Bible and we will laugh at you because we give you the answer already and then I will speak about the same thing in your book what do you say so are you willing to call me I will open sky for you a zoom are you willing to do it trust me a zoom whatever happened here nobody will know about it it's between us it's just YouTube you know people from Indonesia Malaysia Japan you know Europe Iraq I mean nobody just between us so do you like to call me Azam listen Azam if you call me and you show everybody the contradiction you will become famous what do you think, Azam? Here we go. You call me and we will put the scriptures. You are the one going to show me this contradiction, isn't it you? Azam, I will have I will give you uh, three minutes to say yes, I will call you, otherwise, I will send you free shipping and handling to Allah. I don't have time for kids. So are you a man who wanna call me and get me busted or not? If you are not, then go. I have no time for kids. I will give you three minutes. Let me know if you are a man. If you are not, then cut that thing between your legs and don't claim that you are a man because obviously you are not. Allah, he gave you extra privilege because of that thing between your legs. And obviously you don't have it. You are like Muhammad. He spent 10 hours to find, he went to pee. Prophet, why you are taking so long to, to pee? He said, I need to find it first. So are you looking for it? Azam? Or you are not a man. Which one you will find faster? Skype? Or what is there? Which is not there? Drop the link. Get out of here. I think this is the same kid. You know, he went and he came back. We blocked him. Get lost. Potato. You know, uh, you know the, the funny thing about Muslims, there's things you can say in different channels. Here, you cannot play with me. And the, the reason they don't dare to call, because they knew they cannot play. And the Muslim, sometimes he tried to be smart. So he said, like, like ultimate thought, he said, okay, I don't accept any tafsir. So now what Christian prince he can do? I don't accept any hadith. So what Christian prince he can do? <laughs> Supposedly, he struck me from all the, the papers I can play with. I don't accept hadith. I don't accept tafsir. I don't accept interpretation. I don't accept the Arab. I don't accept the Arab. So now, like, supposedly, like, how oh, I'm going to debate me? I said, I don't. I told him, I don't accept all of this. So he can't show me Ibn Kathir. He can't show me Al Bukhari. And so, Christian Prince, now he can do nothing. Still, we got you busted. Doesn't matter. I'm going to grab you from your tail. Even if the room have no corner, I will corner you. You are talking to me. Deal with it. Even if the room is a circle room, 
I will corner you. Potato. All right. Anything else? Yeah, I just, I, I blocked him. I don't have time for kids, you know. I mean, okay, hold on. So if you come here and you say to Christian Prince, you can answer this, and I answered you. Anyone can go and read the verses, and you can see. Like, when you have three or four people talking about the same story. Okay. So let us say a person, he have a car accident. He have a car accident. The first person he says, this person he died because of car accident. Then the second person he said, this person he died because his heart was bleeding. The third person he said, his lung was bleeding. Well, all of them they are telling the truth because because of the car accident, his heart was bleeding and his lung was bleeding. He died. Very silly. But when you are just looking desperately to find a contradiction, you will find it if you are looking for something you try to fabricate. Here in our in our uh, side, we are showing you from your Quran, step by step. In one verse, Allah, he says, he created the mountain after he created the earth right away, which means the second thing is the mountain. We go to a different verse, we will find the opposite. The last thing, it was the mountain. So there is no need even to debate about it. But anyway, even when you come to show us in true contradiction, we say to you, call us to show us, to, uh, you, you, don't, you don't dare to do it. This is telling you how weak you are. Muslims are weak believers. This is why they have weak hadith. You ask any Muslim, what do you think about this hadith? He says to you, it's weak. What kind of religion they, they accept to believe that their prophet, the story they wrote about him is a fabrication. They are saying to us that we Muslim, we lie. About who? About our prophet. This is what they were saying. So you have books in your libraries, all those hundreds of years, and they are the highest books for you. The second we quote for you what is in your books, the books are not good no more. That because your religion is weak and your prophet is weak. How you can find a good wife? Somebody told you that I am your neighbor who work in... Oh, I can find a good wife. Look, I need to find a good wife for me first. <laughs> I can find a good one. <laughs> like somebody saying to, like somebody told you that Christian Prince, you have ten wives. If I can find a good wife for me, I, I will advise myself first before I advise you. <laughs> People are funny, unbelievable. Uh, here we go, Captain. He changed his name. He came back. Well, moreover, the Bible is written by many different authors. It doesn't matter because simply the Bible is a book of books, you idiot. You are again son of Muta. The problem is that you have a book which is supposedly written by one author, yet this author contradicts himself. Change your name and come back. <laughs> See, this is against you. Because if we have different author, as you are saying, and each one of them is saying something. Well, they are different author. Otherwise, if we have one book, there's no need for the second person to write the same book. That would be stupid. As an example, if we have the book of Luke, and then the book of Luke is exactly the same as the book of John. So why John need to write, write a book the same as the book of Luke? <laughs> Hey, John, this is the same exact book of Luke, so why you are writing it again? Oh, okay, I like to do copy-paste. <laughs> so, Abdul, when we say we have four Gospels, that because Christianity is consistent. 
for four individuals is reporting the same story and everyone is giving you a dimension of the story. If you look at yourself, you have four dimensions. One in the front, one on the left, one in the right, and one in the behind. Each one who stand in the place, he see the same object, but he will see the front side. The perfect dimension is four dimension. Because we saw it from all direction. So the four, they complete the story. They don't add to it. They don't take from it. They make it more understood and more explained and more, let us say, livable story. If I was next to Jesus when he was on the cross, let us say I was 20 meters away. But there's a person who was 10 meters away. That person who is 10 meters away, he will hear more what Jesus is saying than someone like me. So for me, I can say what I heard from people around me because their voice is loud to me. But I can tell you what the one who was 20 or 50 meters away was saying. So this is your silliness. However, in your Quran, it says, Inna alayna wa Quranahu. It is on us to collect it and to put it as a book. But Allah he did not collect the book. He did not gather the book. Who is the one who did that? Muhammadan. And then we find <coughs> that the Quran of Uthman, none of you have it. The Quran of Muhammad, none of you have it. The Quran of Hafs, none of you have it. I mean, Muhammad, he says, Allah, he sent him seven Quran. None of them you have. You claim that you have recitation of a person who was 200 years after Muhammad. His name is Hafs. And then we go and take a look at Hafs. We found that the Muslims in their book, they say that he was a thief. And he was a fraud. What is your view about Buhaira writing uh, uh, the Quran? I don't believe that Buhaira he wrote the Quran. I believe the one who wrote the Quran is Waraq ibn Nufal. Unless you can provide me different evidence. If you remember in the hadith it says that when Waraq he died, the inspiration of Allah is post. Correct? Buhaira he don't live in Mecca. So Muhammad, he needs somebody to supply him in the moment, on the time. There's no internet at that time to send messages, you know. So uh, when Waraka he died, Muhammad stopped receiving Quran and Muhammad tried to kill himself. You remember the hadith? You need to ask yourself, and even the hadith says that Waraka was writing a Quran, was, was writing in Jeel, in Arabic, that is the Quran. If we ask the Muslims, what happened to this book? Which is what I was writing. Where is where it go? Is Waraka is a deceiver? They will say no. Is Waraka is a bad Christian? They will say no. Is Waraka following the true God? They will say yes. So where is his book? Here you see that Waraka, he become a Christian and he was writing the Injil. Read carefully. Who during the pre-Islamic period become a Christian and used to write an Arabic writing and used to write the gospel in Arabic. Do you see it? That is the Quran. And then when this guy he died, Muhammad stopped receiving messages from Allah. So what is the connection between his death and Quran? It's obvious. Right? Here you see that few days after Waraka died, 
and the divine inspiration was also paused for a while for a while a while mean long time and the prophet becomes so sad so we have heard that he intended several times to throw himself from the top of the high mountains here again this is confirmed that Muhammad is so desperate he lost hope he didn't know what to do the guy was giving him Quran is dead to the point he tried to kill himself so for me I believe that uh, Waraka is more convincing to be the one behind Muhammad and I believe actually Waraka is the real father of Muhammad um, can you give that which says we have not sent any spirit this verse to prove Muhammad is a false prophet I'm not sure what you mean we have not sent any spirit I'm not I'm not sure what you are trying to say you have to make it more clear my friend uh, do we have any Abdul want to say anything the body of seal Muslim they say this one is a truth of seal. Well, if, if, if they say this is a truth of seal, that's wonderful because the Tabari will expose all of Islam. You see, if you go to the books of Tafsir, like in this website here at tafsir.com, this is the, uh, the, the, the Jordanian government website. So if you go and click here at books, you will find a long list, you know, really huge list. And you will find the date of those lists. Like as an example here, this is 150 after Muhammad announced himself doing hijrah or immigrating. This is the calendar of the Muslims. So the more earlier it is, the more truthful it is. So when the Muslim they say, we accept this guy, as long it is earlier, no problem that's wonderful because at that time the Muslims did not need to compromise like today to say oh it doesn't say beat the women oh it doesn't say etc you know what I mean so they were like at that time in their glorious gang time killing everybody occupying land so they have no reason to compromise in their books so books who can explain Islam is books which is very early in Islam can be considered more truthful than other books who came like Ibn Kathir Ibn Kathir he came 800 years of Muhammad after Muhammad that's mean 1400 years after Jesus you know what I mean so this guy is a new pretty new compared to the rest so his, his translation to fit with that time, or to say his interpretation to fit with that time. So they compromise. So the earth is not a flat no more. The, the sun is not going in the muddy water no more, etc. Right? Uh, so here you see the date of every interpretation. And the more it is, the, the number is small the more it is better so now a tabari is a 310 which means 310 after muhammad claiming to be a messenger but this is not the earliest but this is one of the earliest so for me no problem actually i changed the muslim to say we agree with this a tabari is very good for me no problem All right Do we have any Abdul? We don't call, we talk face to face like real man. Yeah, well obviously you are a donkey because you are in the internet. And as long as you do face to face, why you don't go to Israel to face to face? The Jews are waiting for you, potato. Don't you want to get uh, Jerusalem back? Mm, do face to face, you're a potato. What happened to face to face? Face to face in, in YouTube only?
And if YouTube, you want to do face to face? You're in YouTube, you idiot. <laughs> you're in YouTube, I am in YouTube. Oh, you face to face. <laughs> Stupid is desperate, desperate, stupid people. We need face to face. We do not need face to face. Who care? I am here destroying your God. Do something about it. We need to be face to face. Okay, don't do me then. <laughs> Who care? <laughs> if you want to debate me face to face or ass to ass, you are a donkey. <laughs> Like if you can, so I I cannot do I cannot do good if it's in the internet. So you will do good in the face to face. Trust me, you will do pee pee when you see my face. I look scary. If I go fishing, I look at the ocean, the fish die. Unbelievable. I go in the elevator. I say hello. Nobody answer. I scared the hell of everybody. Good morning. Nobody answer. Like hello. Oh, by the way, I'm your neighbor. And nobody answer. Everybody's head is down. Like. Okay. You know, and they are breathing heavy. Face to face, what face to face would do? We don't want to go there. You think someone like you can intimidate someone like me? Face to face, you would be pippy. Potato. When the Christians they come to Muhammad and they want to debate him face to face, do you know what Muhammad did? They spend the whole day talking to him, answer us. Okay, give us an answer. He refused to talk. And then second day he said to them, those who say Allah, he told me to tell you this. Okay, what do you know? Uh, okay. <laughs> he said, Allah, he said to me, if they have dispute to you about this topic again, which is about Jesus, tell them, bring your wives, I bring my wives, bring your children, I bring my children, and let us ask Allah to cut us the one is lying. This is how a Muslim did debate. Are you better than your prophet? Your prophet is a potato. He could not refute the Christians. The Christian party. Take your microphone. May Allah cut my nose if I'm lying. Christian Prince, your turn. May Allah cut my beard if I'm lying. Hey, Christian Prince, that's not fair. I said cut my nose. You said cut my beard? I mean, Abdul, if he can cut my beards, he, my beard, he can cut my, my, my nose too. Don't worry. But he can cut nothing. <laughs> you still have your nose there, and I still have my beard here. <laughs> And look, look how stupid this logic is. So Allah will not curse you unless you ask him to curse you if you are lying. Is that right? So I can lie all day long as long as I'm not asking Allah to curse me. If I am lying, he will not curse me. <laughs> it's like saying, I'm going to rape women. And Allah will not punish me unless I ask him to punish me. What the heck? Your prophet, he have no IQ at all. Not only have a low IQ. You remember the guy he called us before and he says, the reason the angels, they are, uh, they gave, they did a, a, a surgery for a prophet and they installed a wisdom in his chest because they are improving his IQ. You remember it? It's the, you know, you, you people download it. They are improving his IQ. Okay. Can you give me some point to prove that Muhammad is a false prophet? My friend, a prophet is somebody make a prophecy, correct? Okay. Ask the Muslims, where is the prophecy in the Quran which come true? They will try to give you something from the hadith, even those we get them busted. As an example, there's a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chapter of Al-Kafirun, which means the chapter of the Kuffar. Muhammad is said to the people of Quraysh, I believe not in what you believe, and you will not believe in what you believe, and I will not believe in what you believe, and I will not believe in what you believe, and I will not believe in what you believe, and I will not believe in what you believe, and I will not believe in what you believe, which means, I believe not in what you believe, and you will not worship what I worship, and I will not worship what you worship, because you have your God, I have my God. Later, they convert to Islam. But he just told them, you will not worship what I worship, and I will never worship what you worship, and you will never worship what I worship, because you have your religion, I have mine. But later, they became Muslims. <laughs> you see why I say stupid? See how easy to get him busted? He just, he told them, you will never.
And later, all of them, they became Muslims. So how he is a prophet? By the way, I used to be a prophet before. I will tell you how I was a prophet. As an example, I am the only one who predicted that millions of women, they will have their period every month. Don't tell me, please, how I know that. I mean, it's inspiration. I'm telling you, it's a true story. So when those Abdul, they say, uh, Muhammad is a prophet, well, a prophet is a prophet who make a prophecy. We look at your prophet prophecy, we love. We find that there's no prophecy in the prophecy except the, the opposite. Muhammad said that the judgment day is very near and the moon split, which means the judgment day started. The moon split is a sign of a judgment day starting. That's it. I mean, how bigger it is from splitting the moon. But look, the moon is still there and it's not a split. Did Allah glue it back? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Prophecy about gold mine. Yeah, Muhammad, he's not, not a gold mine actually. He said there is a mountain under the river of Euphrates. And this is very soon. And that was 1400 years ago. Read carefully. This is a prophecy, Muhammad, he says, with soon, soon, and cover a mountain of gold. Very soon. Would you like to debate Indonesian minister? I would like to debate Indonesian president too. Who okay, cares? Don't tell me what you do. All of them there will come. That would be fun, actually. Sure. Indonesian minister, Indonesia. Who care? You, you see, title mean nothing. We did, we debate the human being, not his title. Right? People are people. So what if he's a minister, he have a different brain? He might be more stupid than the rest. Uh, how the Muslims explain that Quran says no prophethood comes from except from Abraham and Isaac line? Well, they cannot explain anything. I mean, when you say they explain, they just say they answer that. Uh, if we go to the verse, you know, the one you are talking about, you will find that the verse saying clearly that we made the, the lineage of a prophethood from Abraham and its mention, his children Isaac and Jacob. Doesn't mention Ishmael. How they can answer it they will say there's other verse saying that ishmael is a prophet but doesn't say from his seed will be a prophet here it says and we bestowed on abraham isaac and jacob and we ordained among his offspring prophethood so he mentioned clearly the names and then he mentioned names of the prophets will come from isaac and jacob Who is Imam al-Mahdi? If I tell you really who is Imam al-Mahdi, you will laugh. Okay. Uh, do you know, uh, for sure we know Peter, right? Peter. If I tell you that the madness of Muslims goes so far to the, to the point they say that al-Mahdi is the grandson of disciple Peter, it's hard to believe, right? Usually I don't talk about those things because this is a complicated topic. But according to the stupidity of this cult, that Peter, he is the grandfather of Al-Mahdi.
And now this is the bent in which sect we are talking about. So this is the Shia. The Shia, they say, that the disciple of Christ, Peter, he is the grandfather of Al-Mahdi, which means the Mahdi is descendant from Peter. Maybe we can make a special topic about this to cover it. And then we can show the reference and the books. But it's hard to believe. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, it's not only hard to believe. I mean, like it's so stupid. I mean, uh, Peter. <laughs> hey, don't use the bad word in front of the name of Peter. Do you want me to block you? Are you stupid or what? Clean your nose. Clean your mouth. Don't use the F word. So, you know, uh, the more you read Islamic books, the more you learn, the more you notice how crazy this cult is. So you might be shocked when you hear it. You know, there's many things I don't share really because there is no, I mean, I focus in what is making things easy and it is necessary to learn to defeat Islam. There's other things which is not really the major interest. I don't really talk about The one who fixed the Arabic grammar, his name is Abu Aswad Du Ali, and he is a Persian. You can search on Google who is the one who did the Arabic grammar, you will find his name in English. Search. Well, there's a million things I, we can talk about Islam, we never mention here, but as you see, you have to give me a reason to talk about it. You see, a knowledge of a man will appear when the reason come you know what i mean so usually we speak about certain things as i said because it is what i need to arm the christian with for it is everyday topic al-mahdi is not really important for me uh, because uh, you know i mean he's not even muhammad so what i would talk about you know but obviously there's tons of fiction stories about such a person and uh, you know the muslims are so desperate to try to find let us say a special man uh, when when islam took a christ from their life those people who've been forced to convert to islam they are trying to find a new christ so you will find that in islam there is a 12 imam jesus have a 12 disciple Muhammad, he says, take the Quran from four. We find that we have a four gospel. And we have four disciples wrote the gospel. We find that Muhammad, he used the number seven and the number 70. This is Jesus' words. So Islam is an counterfeit, false copy of Christianity mixed with other belief. All right? So, we can go really far in topic, which will drive you crazy about things the Muslims they believe in. But if there is no reason, I don't talk about it. Like, you know, when I spoke about, do you remember when you spoke about the Shia, they believe if you wear a flat, uh, 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 black shoes, you cannot have sex, your private part will not function. Why I talk about it? Because a Shia called me and he said, well, we are Shia, we don't believe in this garbage of the Muslim Sunni. So I, right away, I got him busted. Okay, let us talk about the Shia. <laughs> but if you notice, always we focus in the Sunni. So Al-Bukhari, those things are Sunni. But because the Shia is not the one who debate us, so we don't open their books. So Shia, they get excited. They thought, oh, okay, Christian prince is getting the Muslim Sunni busted. But the second they come near me, then we open their yellow pages and they will be sorry. As an example, Al-Mahdi is a person when he fell in his ass, he say, Alhamdulillah, and he don't fart. Like, what? <laughs> he don't fart. <laughs> Al-Mahdi, he don't pee. He don't do poo-poo. <laughs> Al-Mahdi, his mother, she gave birth to him from her thigh, not from her vagina. 
uh, I mean, Shia, they have a lot more crazy than the Sunni. Like, if you look at your wife's anus when you are having sex, your son will be a homosexual. Other hadith says, if you look at your wife's uh, anus uh, when you are having sex, your son will be dumb and mute. This is what Shia believe. Uh, watermelon, if she is a sweet, she is Shia. If she is better, she is Sunni. According to Shia, every single Muslim Sunni is a homosexual. Why? Because Shaitan, when a Muslim Sunni is born, Shaitan, he put his finger in his anus. So if you don't give me a reason to talk about those things, I mean, it's endless. Why want I talk about it? Right? Which hadith that Sunni and Shia accept? You see, both of them, they accept the same hadith, but they bend in the, uh, the agenda. So you will see a Muslim Shia uh, quoting Al-Bukhari if that hadith support his belief, vice versa. See the hypocrisy? So they say to you, you don't accept Al-Bukhari unless the hadith is supporting their belief. Actually, uh, uh, if you remember a few months ago, I posted a video I did not keep it for long about a Muslim uh, Shia Sheikh. He was saying, he was explaining to you why the Muslim Sunni are homosexual. Why? Because Shaitan, he put his finger in their anus. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Well, maybe I will find it only in English, in Arabic. Let us see. I don't know if I can find it really, but uh, we will try. Let us see. Let us see. Yeah, I cannot find the video. I, I, anyway, I, I'm sure many of you, they have it already. You will see how he's explained how Shaitan, he put his fingers in, in the Muslim. So there's millions of stories. All of them, they are funny. As an example, like uh, the, the grandson of Muhammad, he speaks uh, 70 or 80 million languages. How he speaks those languages, don't ask. No, don't even try to ask. So both of them, they have a lot of garbage and both of them, they make fun of each other. But the fact, both of them, they are stupid. Right? Any other question here? Well, it is 2 a.m. in the morning and I think it's good, it's better for me to go. What do you think, guys? Isn't it better? It is 2 a.m. in the morning. Hello. And I think my eyes start hurting from looking at the computer. We are already here almost for four hours. You see how, how fast 
time goes yeah he speak 80 million or 70 million i speak i speak 69 69 million so like we have to say me and al hassan al hussein we are very close in how many languages we speak you know like when i you know you know you remember the story i told you like when i was a kid i have a fight with a you know brosley uh, you know from brazil which he like he was coming from indonesia and you know like we went to the grocery store the guy was trying to buy potato and i said to him i'm not going to give you the potatoes and then he spoke to me in his language which is like chi ho he this true story by the way and then i said to him you know when to fight outside so he said okay let us go fight outside of the store so we went we jumped out of the store we found ourselves in south africa and then in south africa i said to himself you know what we are in south africa me myself i don't like to fight in the south can we move to the north so we more we you know decide to go to the north pole and then in the north pole you know we found that it's too icy i mean come on so i said to brosley like come on and i cannot fight you in the ice you know it's so cold here he said okay hello we were in africa you cannot find me in africa we went to the north pole you cannot find me in the north pole. so where will we go i said okay let us go where the tree of allah which is in the seven galaxies he said this is very far i said no it is in it is in the nile river which is in ethiopia let's go there so we went to ethiopia and then we find that the ethiopian they have a war I said to him we cannot fight here because they have a war we have to go to a place where we can even just uh, you know have a uh, fight with ourselves so i said okay where we're gonna go so i said okay let's go i have a friend who live in japan you know we just across the border through you know we go from iraq we go to japan because japan is in the border of iraq as you know so he said oh, okay so let us go to japan and uh, we went to iraq we crossed the border we found ourselves again in south africa he said like what the heck i said well somebody the american the jews they change the map they always play with the map i mean don't you know so like I said okay so what we do now he said okay let's try again this is a true story by the way true story i mean if you don't believe me i can show the reference <laughs> So Christian Prince, he is trying to avoid Brosley. <laughs> I got, I, I will fight you face to face, okay, Brosley. But uh, you know, we have to do it in so like not here, okay? Where we go there, okay? We go there. No, no, this is not a good place, too. <laughs> this is what the Abdul they do with me. I'm um, really true story, by the way, true story. I mean, is it obvious that it's a true story? Uh, people who believe in a flying car with a flying horse uh, a prophet he you know the prophet he have the power of 4,000 men in sex I mean why do you have a race did you measure it how you measure it do you think at that time they have like a measurement for boom boom I mean how you do that how Muhammad and how the Muslim they come to the conclusion that the prophet he have the power of 100 men of people of heaven and he will have a power of 4,000 men because if every man of people of heaven <laughs> have the power of 40 men <laughs> oh boy. every man in the heaven you know he have the power of 40 men in earth and boom boom Muhammad he will have the power of 100 men x40 4,000 <laughs> and you know the funny is that this religion they are proud about the penis of their prophet in heaven but on earth the guy he could not even have sex with his wives and he could not make any of them have babies I mean nothing wrong with if he cannot make them have a baby but obviously he's exaggerating with his sex power because he knew there is something missing you see those who exaggerate talk about their sexual power you know obviously either they are mentally ill or they are trying to cover something it maybe it's the opposite the hadith says that the prophet he was bewitched and he imagined that he have sexual intercourse in fact he did not what happened muhammad he go to his friends he said yesterday brother and sisters I was doing boom boom all night. You really, Muhammad? Yes, I did not stop. Boom 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 from a woman to a woman to a woman. Second day, the women they start talking. They ask the wives, man, your husband yesterday told us you to have a very hot night yesterday. I said what? He did not even get close to us. What are you talking about? <laughs> 
So when the news became fishy, so Muhammad, he had to come with an excuse, and he said, uh, oh, I'm bewitched, okay? I just imagine myself having sex with him like that, that way. I mean, name one thing for me about this man is not stupid. How in the world this guy, he imagined himself having sex? You see, you might say, okay, this guy is sleeping. This is not in the sleeping time. This is in the daytime. That's why they are saying bewitched. Otherwise, all of us, we see dreams. You know, as an example, you know, my, myself, I saw myself uh, talking to Joe Biden, and he explained to me the Quran by one word. I said to him, can you explain the Quran, Joe Biden? He said, you know the thing. And I was like, what? That's good. Perfect. You know, that's it. No complaint. I mean, that, what you can say, that's it. You know the thing. So, all of us, we see dreams. But this is not a dream. It says he was bewitched. And this is during daytime. And yet he is not living reality. To the point, even his sex is fake. Even his sex, they have no witnesses. This guy, he see an angel, there's no witness. This guy, he go to seven heaven, no, there's no witness. This guy, he speak to the tree, there's no witness. The Muhammad want to do poo, poo The trees move to keep him under the shade. Okay, how many hours Muhammad was doing poo, poo You see, the shade don't move after two minutes if you sit under the tree. Not even 15 minutes. Not even one hour. In order the shade to go, you have to be doing poopoo -poo for 10 hours. And why? I mean, these miracles, all of them, they are, they are, they are shitty, shitty miracles. The, you know, the prophet, he wanted to do poopoo -poo, and there's nobody because he don't want anyone to see his ass. So the trees move and they uh, surrounded him. And <laughs> true story. You know, while Jesus was making the blind see Muhammad the miracle, Allah wanna, wanna cover the ass of Muhammad making trees move. And then Muhammad, he saw two trees from far away. He said to them, come here. And the trees, they came creeping in their belly. And he asked them to say Shahada and they convert to Islam and they went back. So how come the Quran keeps saying, he have no miracles, he have no miracles. The people keep saying, how come he have no miracles? Because it sounds like he have a lot of miracles. I mean, the guy, he have tons of miracles based on the hadith. But in the Quran, they keep saying, if you remember chapter 13, which is supposed to be at the end of the Quran, even though they call it 13, uh, it says, if if just one, one, the people around him, they are wishing just one, one ayah, one miracle, one sign, just one. And still Muhammad cannot provide any. This is at the end of the Quran, you see here, because you might say this is chapter 13, but this is real in reality, this is the end of the Quran. The believer says, if only, if only, only just one sign from Allah sent to him, one. So all those hadith are fabrication, obviously, because the Quran saying is, they wishing they are just one. Or Muhammad speaking to the lizard, and the lizard convert to Islam. Uh, <sighs> all right anything else actually yeah, my, my eyes is hurting now you believe it or not I said to myself let me go for 15 minutes and make a video about this topic and go back unbelievable and now it's four hours do you see how much I hate you uh, Where we can find those hadith, or this is very easy to find them. Let me see. But the question is where we can find them in English. Uh, let's see.
I just see this one. Here we go. So this is uh, uh, this is Sirat Ibn Ibn Ishaq. This is in Arabic. I cannot find it in English. Islam port. This is the book of Sirah by Ibn Ishaq. And here you will see the story. Muhammad, he wanted to do poo-poo. The storage for the thing. When the prophet who want to do shit, he keep a distance. So none of us can see him. All right. Then he said, uh, he called Jabir. He saw uh, he saw uh, two trees, and there is like a few arms between them. Uh, so he said to Jabir, uh, "Go to those trees and tell them, tell that tree to join the other one, so I can sit behind you." And then the tree, she creep, and she uh, she join the other one. All right, so the prophet can do, and then he sit and he did chat. Let me send you the link, and then I will send you the link, and I will use Google Translation, you know. Let us see, Google Translation. Uh, let us see. To find it fast, we look for the word tree. Okay, so here it says, uh, it says here, blah, 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 blah. call out those branches of a tree, actually the tree, the other branches. So he called the tree and uh, I mean, translation is not really good. Uh, so the tree, the tree, she creep and she, she, uh, she walk to the other tree, and then Muhammad he enter, sit underneath, and he did poo, poo So let us see here. It says, "Enter the messenger of Allah, prayer." And you know, uh, okay. So you see, translation is not really good, but maybe if we use Google Translation, let us see. I will use Google Translation. Which mean I will use uh, I will copy the text, not all, not the whole page. So if we go here, let me zoom out so you can see all the text. <clears throat> um, Where, 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 uh, here we go. Actually, maybe here we did not see it. Let me go back. Grant him peace between two walls and part the Shemashin of Allah. Grant him, uh, he said. Uh, Okay. Yeah, for some reason in the, the translation is not so. Anyway, so here we go. It says, <clears throat> uh, from Jabir, we went, me and the Prophet, uh, in a trip. And he, if he wanted to have a shit, excuse my language, he stay away so nobody can uh, uh, see him from far distance in the ground. 
and uh, this is in the case there is in the ground there is no like an uh, no landscape to hide behind like a wall or no trees and then he says to me Jabir uh, actually this is a different miracle let's see the other one now here we go here so he said to me Jabir go to this tree and tell the tree to join its friend which means the other tree so I can sit behind you and he can do his poo poo uh, and then he says so I went and I told the tree so the tree followed the other tree and then he sat behind it and he did his shit and then when he came back uh, uh, riding our like uh, whatever horses or camels uh, we uh, we walk and it was as if there is birds flying on top of us to keep us on shade let us copy this part and try to take it to Google translation here let us do that always it's better if you <clears throat> if you copy like a little amount of text not the whole text not the whole page so we will paste whatever we copy from there and here it says let us see the translation so he said oh jabber uh, say to this tree to follow your friend which means the other tree so i can sit behind it and i and the tree that the crowd until you know cut to the other tree and translation is not really good and then he sat behind them until he read the relief himself then we came back uh, in the road and then uh, as if there is like birds and as i said to you so let me give you the link so this is the miracle of muhammad uh, asking two trees to join so he can shit behind them you can so you can say this is like a shitty hadith and this is the reference if you in case you are a muslim you don't believe me here we go and this is your Muslim website, and this is value number one, page number 257. See, Muhammad, I mean, Allah is, you know, what you can say? No comment. I did that many times. You know, I go and I say to the trees, go, I want to do poo poo. Right? Yeah. I mean, in the same page, there's many things claiming there that Muhammad he did, but all of them they are funny and stupid. Even the miracle of Muhammad is about people. Uh, can you in the future make a series videos of Islam stories by time-based order? Well, this is an impossible mission, my friend, because Muslims themselves, they don't know about what is the time order. There's, there's no proof, you see. This is one of the earliest books about Muhammad. Uh, but this person himself, he is copying from Ibn Ishaq. And uh, Ibn Ishaq, he made it clear that he dropped tons of his story, which is not suitable for Muhammad. And you will notice that the date and the reference about things, all of them, they don't make sense. So never think that Muslims, they themselves, they knew anything about dates, you know? The, the Muslims, the, the Muslims, they agree about not to agree. That's the only agreement Muslims they have. That's why when somebody says, like, do you think Islam is going to demonate the earth? I, I laugh because Muslims agree not to agree. You see, they might say, you see them united, like cartoon of Muhammad, they go crazy, but all of them, they kill each other too. They are not united, really. They are not united about their history, about their hadith, about their religion, about the meaning, about the interpretation. Uh, uh, misread her comment please unblock her Captain Hood Hood well she can come with different name if she is a female or a male I don't care make a new name and come back do we have any one more Abdul 
And as you see, like the verses we showed you from the Quran, those are the last, in the last, uh, uh, like let's say, uh, years of Muhammad life. And yet Muhammad, he don't have miracles. You know? This is Quran. People are still asking, how come they don't have one sign? So if Muhammad he have any of those miracles, he would say, okay, I did miracle. Don't you? Are you stupid or what? How many miracles I have to do? But they are saying, if one, just one, just one. And this is the end of Muhammad life. Still not even one sign sent to him. So if Muhammad, he is he, he like the tree. I mean, this is a big miracle. You see, uh, you know, sometimes like you want to go do poo, poo and you know, there's no bathroom. So if you can, like, you know what? I wish sometimes like I'm like Muhammad. So imagine like you go, let us say, uh, you are in Washington, D.C., and you are in the road, and you need to go to the bathroom now. So look, if I want Muhammad, I will say, uh, hey, Jabir, go and tell the White House, where Joe Biden he is not living now, to move here next to the Capitol building so I can do poo, -poo between them. Miracle. Miracle. Even even he have miracles about shit. Actually, there's a hadith says that when the prophet did do poo, poo the earth open its mouth and swallow his poo, -poo and his pee smell like musk. And I changed the Muslim to say I'm lying, by the way. I mean, the guy, even his poo, poo like the guy, he go to do poo, -poo like he stand up, there's nothing. It's gone. Like what? Like where did the poopoo go? <laughs> you know, like Muhammad is doing poo, -poo and Muhammad is said for ten hours. So you expect that Muhammad, when he stand up, you will find like a mountain of poo. -poo. No, brother, no. The earth will like. <laughs> Yummy, 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 yummy. Like the earth cannot even wait. Like the guy, he is dripping and the earth is eating. There's any Muslim can say I'm making things up. Challenge me. Just to challenge me. All it would take you is just to challenge me. Very easy. Shish kebab. You know? <laughs> this is why, you know, when you see the stupidity of this cult, the more you study, you will see how lucky we are that we are following someone like the Messiah. You see, you might find like there's a, there's bad names. The Bible mission stories about bad people, right? But the Bible never prays bad people. And at the same time, we have a very wonderful person. And this person, even though he is between us as a human, but he was holy always. And you will notice that Jesus, he did nothing for himself. You see, Muhammad supposedly here using the power of God to do poo, poo What is favor in that? Jesus, he used his power to heal you, to make the blind see. What Jesus will get from that? Nothing. Do he get paid for it? No. Is he doing a short time? No. So we have a person who was serving us, literally. We have a person who said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you don't belong to me. Jesus did not come because he needed you to wash his feet. He did not come to be your king. He came to serve you. And this is what makes Jesus so beautiful. And when we use the word beautiful, it's not about a look. We use the word beautiful because languages cannot describe such a beauty. That there is a person who has such a power over death, over life, giving life, resurrecting people from death. Imagine if any of us, we have little power like this. We will be so proud and kings will bow down to us. Because everybody will die or will die. 
one word from this person can bring you back to life. He can forgive sin. All of us, we suffer from sin. So instead of using his power to make us his slaves, that's I'm God and go down, you are nothing. He was washing our feet. While Muhammad was seeking sex and women to sleep with him, making verses saying that Allah told him any woman she want to give herself to the Prophet. What is, what is the purpose of this verse? If we can quote a verse, why God want to say any woman she can give herself to Muhammad to sleep with her? What that would do to religion? That what all cult leaders they share. Jesus, he never seek any pleasure, yet he have a body of a human. He never seek money. He never seek power. He never even own a donkey. And even when he ride, he ride a donkey. Very humble. So the people they say, oh, this is the king. This will be the king of the Jews. How he is the king of the Jews, but he is so humble. How he is the king of the Jews, but he is so poor. Where is his palaces? Where is his gold? Where is his silver? Look who is his disciples. While Muhammad was associating himself with the rich people only. If you remember, there's a chapter in the Quran, it's called the Abasa wa Tawalla or Abasa. When a blind man, he came to Muhammad. Muhammad, he kicked the man away from his house. The Muslim story says that this blind man was asking Muhammad questions about Islam. And Muhammad was busy with the rich men of Quraysh. And he don't want the people to see that he, look who is associating with him, a poor blind man. So he don't want him. Jesus did the opposite. When the blind man, he said to Jesus, Jesus said to him, what do you want? He said, I want to see, Lord. The blind man, he did not ask, uh, you know, for a sandwich. Blind man, especially at that time, there's no social support, there's no government support. You lay down in the street and you beg for your food. So the normal thing is not to ask for, I want to see. The normal thing is give me, you know, a penny. Let me get a sandwich. This is what people ask for. Even the blind man, he saw Jesus before his eyes open. He said to him, I want to see, Lord. Isn't it amazing? He's blind, yet he knew that this is the person in front of me, which I cannot see, is the one who can make me see. This is why I say when you read what Jesus did, live the story because it is going to make it way more beautiful. Imagine yourself that you are the blind man sitting on the floor. And you know, you will not know what a blind man mean until you are a blind. I hope none of you will be. But a blind man, imagine you close your eyes for two hours. Try it. In the middle of the day and you see nothing. You don't even know how to move in your house, which the house you're used to. So what about moving outside? How you can make living in a time where people who have eyes cannot make living. Yet, this person, he was able to see Jesus. And he said to him, I want to see Lord. So how many of us, we are not like the blind man? How many of us, we have eyes, but we cannot see? How many of us, we reject Jesus, but we have eyes? How we can be very strong in vision, like that blind man who saw Jesus before Jesus gave him his eyes. So always it's wonderful to 
read and live the story and go deep in it. It's not a story. It's a life. It's not a tale. It is an experience. And then if you're able to live the story, then you will become the blind man who can see. And sadly, most of us, we are still blind. So we pray that we will have eyes who can see as that a blind man was able to see Jesus before even he recovered his eyes. That is not easy to accomplish. But I believe that at the end of the day, what Jesus said is absolutely true. It's your faith. When you have faith, you will know Jesus, even if you are blind. That's why he said, blessed those who believe and did not see. And that blind man, he believed in Jesus, that he is the Lord, before he got his eyes. So we pray that all of us, we will be able to do what that blind man was able to do. He had no vision, but he understood. He had no eyes, but he saw what people around did not see. Even the disciple of Jesus, they said to him, why don't show us the Father and that's it? They have eyes, they are the disciples. Jesus said to them, I am with you all this time and you do not know me. The blind man, he called him Lord. He knew it is him. And he was not one of the disciples. So this story can tell me that there's many disciples, their name is not mentioned by name, but they were disciples. And they were maybe more strong than the disciple of Christ in their faith. And this is one of them. So I want to say thank you for being here. I hope today we have a good time. And feel free to download my videos, share them with your friends. And for sure you can cut them pieces because they are long. Uh, try to make them short, but it's not easy. So anyway, we pray that the Lord will open the eyes of the Muslims and to open the eyes of the Christians too, so they can see how lucky they are. For many of us to not notice. And always, all of us, we don't notice what we have until we lose it. A person who have teeth, he don't notice how priceless his teeth until he start losing them one after one. A person who can walk, he don't notice how priceless his feet and his legs until he start feeling he cannot walk no more. A person who have eyes, he don't even think about how lucky I am to have eyes until he loses his vision. This is how the human being is. He appreciates not what he have. But time will come and what you've been given will be taken away from you. You will be stripped from your eyes, from your feet, from your health. And then you will remember to appreciate. So you better appreciate now before it is too late. Thank you. God bless you. And see you soon again. Christ is Lord. I mean to that.